puppet to get a chance at Nebraska. The Cornhuskers leading the nation in scoring with better than 50 points a game. Leading the nation in running the football close to 400 yards per game. An awesome offensive machine. A defense, however, that has yielded some points to the opposition. And Nebraska last Saturday tested for the first time this season by the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. They came from behind to win. Missouri, a team that is developing every week, scored 59 points last week against Colorado. So coming up, the Huskers and the Tigers. The record for the top-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers through six games. You can see the first five were a dance. But they had a bit of a fist fight in Stillwater, Oklahoma, before they beat the Cowboys of Oklahoma State 14 to 10. The Missouri Tigers opened with a most obvious win, a big, big win over a tough Illinois team. Then they slipped at Wisconsin by a point. They lost by seven to East Carolina, rolled up 59 last week against the Colorado Buffalo. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Coach Frank Broyles and Bill Fleming. And we're ready to play football in Columbia, Missouri, with Missouri kicking off and Nebraska receiving with Jeff Smith number 28 and Mike Rozier number 30. Mike Rozier of course one of the three backs that Nebraska will show you and uh, I mean they will really showcase them because they are tremendous football players. Tur quarterback Turner Gill, uh, running back Mike Rozier and wing back Irving Fryer and all three are considered Heisman Trophy candidates. They have been awesome so far in this season. And it may be unusual to have so valuable a commodity as Rozier back under kickoffs, but he's there. And here's the kick by Brad Burdick, high in the air, a yard from the goal line. It is taken by Jeff Smith, a reserve quarterback. A penalty flag is down as he breaks the run back up the sidelines past the 40. But look out for the penalty. If Jeff Smith is a substitute tailback for Rozier, averaged 10 yards a try both his freshman and sophomore year. He'll be the starter next year. The way of this threesome that we mentioned is warranted by one of the biggest and strongest offensive lines in the country. It is clipping against the Cornhuskers. Now, with the ball game against Oklahoma State last week, they fell behind because of mistakes and penalties, and they start off with a mistake. This Turner Gill will open at quarterback, 190-pounder. Mike Rozier weighs in at 210, stands 5'11". Mark Shaleen, 225, and one of the fastest men in the, on the field today. Irving Pryor would probably be the fastest. The split end is Ricky Simmons. He's 5'10", 175, and not too slow-footed himself. The four starting backs all run for Nebraska under 4'5". Average 210 in uh, weight. Most explosive team, Keith. I think they may be the most explosive team I've ever seen play. The penalty puts Nebraska back inside its eight-yard line for the first snap of the ball game. They play on real grass and dirt here in Columbia, Missouri. And Turner Gill puts it in the air on the first play. Another penalty flag is down as Irving Fryer makes the catch near the sidelines and steps out of bounds. Keith, the mistake on the kickoff is Nebraska had cost you a lot of yardage. Smith ran the ball out to the 42-yard line, penalized back to the eight-yard line, really turned out to be about a 34-yard penalty. Immediately, the officials are very much involved in the football game. The referee is Vance Carlson. The umpire is Bob Caceres. Ron Damari is the head linesman. Line judge is Kent Hawk. Field judge Larry Fisher. Side judge is Dick Clark. As you look at the Nebraska offensive front, and they are big people. Ingebrigtsen, 220. Greminger is at guard. He's 260. Trainowitz, 260 at center. Uh, Steinkuhler, a 270-pounder. Greg Orton starting today, 250. And Scott Raritan, the other tackle, is the biggest at 280 pounds. Procedure. Nebraska, first down. So the penalty again against the Cornhuskers. Let me finish the officials. The uh, side judge is Dick Clark, and the back judge is Artie Falk. We have seven officials in the ball game today, Frank. And judging by the intensity of this game, that may not be enough. Keith, I was against the seven officials. I wanted four. <laughs> I really did. That's Fryer going in motion. Rozier with his first carry of the day, and he moves the football from the four up across the ten. Picked up the better part of seven yards before weak linebacker Tracy Mack and strong safety Jerome Caver bring him down. There are your big people up front, Sales, Runyon, Lachey, Curry, and Bell. The linebackers are Tracy Mack and Jay Wilson. Mack, a former fullback. The defensive secondary, Matishak, uh, Snowden, Hawkins, and Caver. Scott 
Kimball is now and it's split in for Nebraska on second down and seven. And uh, Missouri will not let him get around the corner. This is something that the Missouri defense is going to have to do today. They have got to slam the door on the corner. And Missouri has two outstanding defensive ends and Bobby Bell and Taft Sale, two youngsters that run four, six or better, have been playing a long time, very experienced, and know what the assignment is for today's game. It is third down and about seven yards to go. They've got to get near the 18 to get their first down. So it is third and long. And they send Simmons wide to the bottom of the picture with Fryer going that way as well in motion. And Turner Gill back under pressure. Loops it out. Fryer's got it. Great speed man. But as he tries to make his cut on the grass, he slips and falls. And down he goes. But he has the first down. Irvin Fryer, the wing back, may be the most physical wide receiver in America today. Watch him, number 27, 6 foot 2, 195 pounds, runs a 4 4, excellent hand. The excitement really begins when he gets the ball. He slipped on the grass. He might have scored. I make an issue of the grass factor because it is the only grass field in the Big 8 Conference, and it slows you down some. You can't cut as sharply on grass as you can on the artificial rugs or the surfaces. And a penalty flag is down as Mike Rozier turns it up the sidelines and picked up what would have been a Nebraska first down. But the penalty call goes for the third time in the ball game against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Watch the running of Rozier. This is a Tom Osborne method of running the sweep. Uh, Rozier catches the ball going up to the line of scrimmage. Nothing there. He breaks outside, finds a block by the guard in the tight end, and makes a nice gain. But to no avail, it's called back. The football is moved back inside the 25, near the 24. Rozier comes out of the lineup for Nebraska, and Jeff Smith, the 5'9", 190-pound junior out of Wichita, Kansas, is in at the I-back position, and they don't lose much when they put Smith in there. They're wide to the top of the screen, or the wide side of the field, send the I-back in motion, and they fall off on Irving Fryer's side of the field, and Irving tries to turn it back into the middle, and he got a yard, maybe. One thing that Missouri is trying to do defensively is blitz their free safety. And on that occasion, uh, Hawkins came right over the point of attack and stopped the play, number 26. It is now second down and 10 for the Nebraska Cornhuskers with the football sitting just beyond their own 27. Here in the first quarter, the first offensive series of the ball game. Nebraska's already had three penalty flags. Here's Turner Gill firing hard, drills it right to the chest of Fryer. And Fryer makes the catch just over the 35. He's a couple of yards short of the first down as we look at on some scores of games that are going on and some have already been completed. There's a final as Texas number two rolled over Arkansas 31 to three. And it puts a little pressure on uh, Nebraska to win here today uh, with some substance. Otherwise, they might lose that number one ranking. As you see, West Virginia won today to continue undefeated as Nebraska stayed with a ground game, giving the ball to Mike Rozier, the 210-pound senior from Camden, New Jersey, and Missouri brings him down with authority. You can watch the scores as Auburn has jumped ahead of Georgia Tech. They trailed in the first half. That was a great defensive play by the Missouri uh, left side of the team. Penetrated, stopped Rozier before he could get turned his shoulders downfield. Scott Livingston is in the punt now on fourth down for the Cornhuskers, and he will be kicking into a rather brisk win. Short hose is the deep man for Missouri. The kick is away. It's going to hang up in that wind for a while. A short hose comes well up the field to make the fair catch signal and accept the punt just short of the 35-yard line. So Missouri has good field position for their first defensive possession. Frank, this is one of those football games where a coach needs no rhetoric. You're right, Keith. All Tom Osborne wants to do is think about execution, preparing his team to do what they've all, always done. And on the other hand, one thing that Warren Piles wants to do is not overcoach his team. No radical changes so they can be very aggressive. That's Are we in the fix now where Missouri has everything to win, everything to gain? Oh, absolutely. And they, I'm sure they've convinced their team of this. All right, Marlon Adler with his first snap of the ball game. They've got two freshmen lined up and running back. Give it off to the up man, the fullback, and he blows it over the left guard spot and picks up big yardage. Running the football out to the Missouri 48-yard line. Eric Drain, a sophomore from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Just a quick trap with the fullback. Drain, number 33, is the leading ball 
good blocking by the offensive line. Opened up a nice hole. Drain weighs 210 pounds, lowers his shoulder for extra yardage, and makes the first down. You go back to an old, old, old comment from football. If you can run inside, normally you can win. Missouri opened up with a first down play, running inside. Well, they liked it so much, they go right back to it on the other side of the line, and you get something out of it. Moving it from the 48 on one side to the 48 on the other. Marlon Adler is the quarterback. He is a junior out of Winfield, Kansas, for the Tigers. Cameron Riley is one of the redshirt freshmen at tailback from Illinois. Eric Drain is out of Maryland, uh, the big fullback, 205-pounder. Andy Hill, not too big, but he makes a lot of noise, 5'9". Greg White is the flanker. He's a big target at 6'2 and 195. Second down and about six as Adler comes down the line on the option play. Turns it inside and gets inside the Nebraska 45 to about the 43. Mike Knox, weak side linebacker, coming up to make the hit on him as uh, Greg Crawl, the tight end, stands in at 6'4", 235. Scott Shockley, a tackle for Missouri at 270. Tom Hornoff weighs at 255. Bill Greenfield, the center, at 250. Bernard Lester, the guard, at 265. And Conrad Goody, 6'6", 265, the right side tackle. Keith, the Missouri coaches have been talking to their team all week. Keep the chains moving and the clock running. Nebraska's offense can't hurt you on the bench. They need a yard and a half to keep the football on third down. Hands it off to this fullback and nothing doing as Nebraska's number 44, Mike Knox and Rob Stuckey, number 75. Hit him short of the first down. It brings up fourth. The defensive unit for Nebraska. It is Weber, Keeler, Tranmire, Stuckey, and Strasburger. The linebackers are Dom and Knox, the secondary. Harris, Burke, McCashland, and Clark. And uh, Burke and Clark had a big ball game last week for the Huskers. In goes Jeff Smith to return the punt now. Missouri's Adler, quarterback, Marlin, will kick it. It's a high, high in the air, trying to hang it up and trying to kill it deep. Takes a Missouri bounce, heading for the goal line. They've killed it inside the five. A 40-yard punt. Adler hit it right up the old elevator. And it took a Missouri bounce, and it's dead at the Nebraska three. <laughs> so the Nebraska Cornhuskers, they have marked the football just short of the four-yard line. We're well into the first quarter of play. Many games already completed in the eastern part of the country. You can see that Penn State won again today with Notre Dame rolling well over Arnie. And Navy, uh, McCallum, the Navy running back, has had a sensational day for the Middies. Other scores from out of the Northeast as Nebraska and Missouri locked up in a nothing-nothing ball game here with 8.58 to go in the first quarter. Over recent years, since Warren Powers came to Missouri and Tom Osborne became the head coach at Nebraska, they were on the staff of Bob DeManny for a time. But over the last four years, there's been a good deal of rancor between these two teams, some of it fanned by the media. Rozier tries it up the middle and nothing doing as Missouri pins him down. Steve Lachey, big nose guard for the Missouri Tigers in on that play. The Missouri defense has got to gamble uh, to stop this uh, Nebraska offense, but they can't overdo it. Uh, Nebraska last week was stopped by the blitzes. I'm sure they've worked hard on it all week. He picked up a half a yard on that carry. It is second down. The ball is still inside the five. As Irving Fryer goes in motion, gives it back to Rozier, looking for the sideline. And he is particularly tough once he turns it upfield. He walks those sidelines as well as any running back I've ever seen. He gets it up across the 10, still short of the first down with third coming up. That's Warren Powers, the Missouri coach, done a good job here. This year, he's been stressing on his offense to develop a running game. I feel like that's the only way that he can improve his record. They were last in the Big Eight last year and the year before, and that's Tom Osmond unsurpassed as an offensive coach in my mind. It is third down and three. Two tight ends in the lineup now for Nebraska as Turner Gill rolls it out, has great protection, gets it downfield for Irving Pryor, and he overthrows it. Pryor was down there, matched up with Terry Matijak, and he had a half a step on Matijak, but the ball was too long. When you blitz, you're accompanied by man for man. Fry has one step, but uh, he slowed up thinking that Gill was going to run the ball. The blitz was on. He finally laid it up, but it was too long. Incomplete. Good defensive call by Missouri. 
Scott Livingston, the punter, is in the ball game on fourth down, averaging just under 43 yards per punt. He's got to hit it into a very strong win right now. He didn't get a whole lot out of the other one, only 30 yards. He gets a better kick away, but again, the wind's going to kill it, and Missouri's going to have the football first down on the Nebraska side of the field as George Shorthold made the catch in a crowd. Now, remember, under the new rule this year, the man receiving the kick is entitled to two yards of freedom. And Shorthose was perhaps gambling there that Nebraska might tend to overrun him just a tad. Uh, Shorthose uh, should have uh, signaled for a fair catch. There was no way to run the football, and uh, the Missouri fans are booing a little bit, thinking that uh, uh, Steinkuhler was too close, but he wasn't. I think that was a good play, good call. Nonetheless, the Tigers are set up on the Husker side of the field. First down at the Nebraska 47. As short hose going in motion, there's Adler on a roll to the right side, gets good protection, throws his pass. The pass is caught by the tight end, Greg Ball, 235 pounder, standing 6'4. He is a big target. Greg Call was a guard last year. Larry Bechtel moved into tight end. He's big and strong, but fans, he made a sensational play because the linebacker picked him up on the crossing route. He very wisely converted, came back to the inside, and Adler hit him for the first down. And that first down has the ball sitting at the Nebraska 34. We're in the first quarter with 7.45 to play in the first period. Playing in Columbia, Missouri. Adler turns around, gives it to Train as fullback. And Eric Train punches in there for a couple of three yards. The number two fullback, Santiago Barbosa, a sophomore out of Fort Washington, Maryland, has played a lot this year and has played very well and is rated by the coaches at Missouri as an outstanding pass receiver. And you can see Adler's percentages are impressive as well. Adler was a walk-on from the state of Kansas, earned a scholarship, developed last year, and the coaches say he's a good operator with poise and confidence. It is second down and about six. Nebraska faking the blitz. Adler checking off, steps up quickly, puts it quickly on the money. Pass caught by Kirtland Thomas. Kirtland Thomas, a senior out of St. Louis, turned around, looked into the sun, and bang, the ball was there, and it's another Missouri first down. The timing had to be perfect. Operating the quarterback is so important. You can see that uh, Thomas is between two defenders, the pass right on target. Watch, he goes right in behind the cornerback, right here. The ball, that's McCashley, number two. Now we look and see that the safety man is coming up, makes the play, but not before another first down. The ball is right near the 15-yard line of Nebraska as Missouri is moving it. Go inside with Eric Drain, the fullback carrying, and it is short yardage there, a couple of yards maybe. It has never been easy between these two teams. You go back many years, if you would like, to the days of, of Dan Devine. Go back to 1957, if you want, when Frank Broyles was the head coach here at Missouri. Keith, we came from behind to beat Nebraska 14 to 13 with a minute on the clock. Oh, was I happy. Second down, about eight at the 14. Adler going down the line on the option. He'll keep it, turns the corner inside the 10, down at the nine. Brought down by Dave Burke, the cornerback for Nebraska. Burke, 5'10", 195, out of Lakeland, Utah, and had a big ball game last week against Oklahoma State. In talking, as we see the uh, uh, Tom Osmond, the Nebraska coach, Baron Adler, the quarterback, has a tough assignment, Keith. He's got to control the passing game, and he's also an option quarterback, as we've seen on two occasions already. That's Warren Powers. Played at Nebraska, coached with Tom Osmond at Nebraska, as Keith alluded to earlier. Third down and three, the ball is on the Husker nine. First real threat of the football game. They go to the fullback, and he dives over the right side, trying to reach the six and the first down marker. Warren Powell was uh, hired Larry Bechtel, the offensive coordinator at Arkansas, to put in the, uh, his offense and to improve the line blocking. And they're very pleased with it so far. They're improving steadily as the season progresses. It is fourth down for Missouri. The ball is inside the Nebraska seven. It is a short yard for a first down. There is no kicker on the field. They are going. Larry Beckel told me yesterday they've been very, very successful on short yardage. He believes his offensive line can make it in these circumstances. Adler keeps it, turns the corner. Touchdown.
touchdown play. The option play. Take the fullback. Watch the acceleration by Adler. Remember, fans, I repeat, he was a walk-on quarterback. He turns and goes inside, keeping the ball for the touchdown. Bird it in for the extra point try. Brad Perry, the holder. Low snap. Kick is up. Kick is good. You've got four minutes and 44 seconds to play in the first quarter. And Missouri, getting good field position, sticks it in the end zone. Marlon Adler, the Missouri quarterback, leads them on a 47-yard drive, seven plays, sticks it in the end zone himself, the kick good, 7-0. Missouri over Nebraska two years ago, if you remember. A very, very fine Nebraska team came here and had to score with 23 seconds to play in the ball game to win it by a score of 6 to nothing. And just last year, there was quite a scuffle up at Lincoln, Nebraska, when it was a four-point decision for the Huskers. The Huskers scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to win that ball game last year. Right. Their field position has been atrocious, primarily because of mistakes. They've had three flags thrown on them so far here in the first quarter. Burdett's kickoff will not be returned. It is way, way back in the end zone. Talking yesterday with Marlon Adler, Missouri quarterback, the obvious question, how do you plan to move the ball against them? Well, I think uh, they're a little weak on the option, and that's one thing we worked on. We uh, ran a little more last week against uh, Colorado. Basically, uh, they base out of a 50 and variations off of that, and uh, that's what we're used to. That's what we practice against all spring ball and uh, uh, during the early part of fall ball. So it's like playing our own team out there, really. And that's what he scored with, the option. He this is the best field position for Nebraska. They started on the four and the eight before we called the game. Rozier over the left side to the 25. Unless Mike has a pretty good sized day, it will be possible that Napoleon McCallum, the Navy running back, could assume the lead in uh, rushing for the nation. Well, Tom, because he had a big first half today, Frank. He went for 213 yards. I know. It's be a very fine runner. Tom Osmond told me that Rozier's got to make 150 yards for them to win this ball game today. That's a lot. Second down and about six. And it goes back again. Goes to the outside. He punishes defensive backs, and he's got a first down. He isn't terribly fancy. He's big enough. He's strong enough. And he just hammers defensive backs, particularly when they're outsized. And he takes the ball to the 35. First down. Rosier has been averaging 150 yards a game, but what's really impressive with this is 7.4 7 yards per try. Breakaway speeds, 4-4 four, four in the 40. That's his numbers. It's a first down for the Cornhuskers. The ball on their 35. Five-man defensive front for Missouri right now. They're showing blitz. They do blitz, but they get the play away, and they break it up the middle with Mark Shaleen, the fullback. And he is about a 4-4 man at 225 pounds. The one, the one play that Tom Osmond runs when he's in doubt, the trap up the middle. It's been a basic play in his offense. When everybody starts blitzing, just run the trap up the middle. Watch him pry open the hole. His scrimmage at number 58 comes through. And now you see Mark Shaleen, one of the real stories of this Nebraska team, could run only a 4-9 like two years ago. Now he's 4-4 four, four, and 4-5. Four, and the ball is on the Missouri side of the field for the first time today. At the 49 of the Tigers, and it's Rozier looking for a hole, and he is cut down, turned upside down. He ran actually over the top of Dean Steinkuhler, the big right guard, but he had a little help in getting turned upside down by Jay Wilson, the strong side linebacker. And also Jerome Caver, the strong side safety, blitzed and forced the play inside to Wilson. And there is no gain. It'll be second down and 10. Turner Gill is checking the play. Going to throw it. Throws it out there to Simmons, and Simmons makes the catch down inside the Missouri 40, inside the 39. It'll be very close. In fact, it appears to be a first down for Nebraska. Well, you just finished watching the World Series here on ABC. Game number five comes up tomorrow in the pitching matchup of Scott McGregor, the left-hander, and Charles Hudson, the young rookie right-hander, for the Phillies at 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow. It's first down, Huskers, inside the Missouri 39, and Turner Gill drops straight back this time to throw it. He has all day. He goes down the middle. Fryer is there. Touchdown for Nebraska.
remember General Naylor's statement uh, many years ago, even the greatest of uh, players become ineffective without a leader at quarterback. You can see what a quarterback means to a team. Pryor just ran right by the quarterback. Uh, Matichek, 10 yards in behind him. Very bad play on Missouri's ball. The extra point try missed it. Dave Schneider missed the extra point as the ball zeered off to the right. And you've got 2.41 to go in the first quarter. The Nebraska Cornhuskers cheerleaders here. The band uh, is not here, but there's a whole lot of red in the stadium. And they're happy because their team showed an impressive drive going 80 yards for the touchdown. A 38-yard pass from Gill to Fryer. 2.41 to go in the first quarter. Missouri is still leading by one point, however, as the Huskers missed the extra point. Scott Livingston will kick it off in Cameron Riley, 48, and Ron Floyd, the 25, are the return people for the black and gold of Missouri. Missouri should get good field position, Keith. He's taking off into the win. They probably have a chance to get it back in uh, pretty good position. Keith made a good point earlier that uh, Gill threw that ball into the win 38 yards effortless with a tight spiral that didn't uh, wobble at all. Strong. Livingston's kickoff. He got a lot of foot on it. Knocks it way back into the end zone and they're bringing it out. Here comes Riley. Cameron Riley comes out to about the 18. Another look at the touchdown play and an isolated look at the speed of Irving Pryor. Irving Pryor has been timed in better than 4-4. He weighs 195 pounds, but the point fans, he runs right by the key people, the strong safety and the cornerback. Just let him go right behind him. That's a very fundamental mistake. Both the safety man and halfback should have been back on the play. Give Missouri the football. First down at their own 19. And Craig White comes wide to the bottom of the picture. They've actually got three wide people down here. Barbosa and Red now are in the lineup. And that is Red going in motion as Adler turns and gives to the fullback Barbosa. Santillo, 205 pounder from the 19 to the 21 for two. Missouri is going to try to run the ball on first down inside and try to get four or five yards, but they can't get become stereotyped. They've got to mix it up and throw some on first down. Mike Tranmer, the middle guard for Nebraska, appeared to have a sprained ankle as he came off the field, and Ken Graber is now in there, a junior out of Minneapolis, playing the nose guard spot for them. Ron Floyd, another freshman tailback, is now in there as the eye back on second down and eight. And Adler back to throw the ball. He has plenty of time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He looked downfield. He had to go looking then for secondary people. And by the time he was looking for secondary receivers, Ken Graber, number 52, has got him. As a rule, when you pass from this part of the field, you have receivers open. But the Nebraska secondary is very experienced, good speed. They have uh, the receivers covered. Graber comes in and stops and tackles Adler for the loss. At the 16-yard line, where it is third down and 13 now for Missouri. And a real down to be careful. In fact, they're going to take time out to even talk about it. And the timeout comes with one minute and 26 seconds to play in the first quarter. A few puffy clouds floating around in a blue sky here at Columbia as the trees are starting to turn. And it's a festive afternoon as usual when these two old foes get together. Speaking of old foes, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation matches the Washington Redskins and the Green Bay Packers. The ball game is at Green Bay. Washington rolling along these days. Packers are having their problems, but in Green Bay, could be different folks. Nine o'clock Eastern time next Monday here on ABC. Riggins, the fullback from Washington, has had another great year. Sure is. Well, Joseph is doing pretty well too. Yes, he is. He, a lot of the young players are, are coming around for them as well. Second year people. We're very proud of Joe Gibbs. He, he was uh, on my staff for a number of years. Let's check in right now with Jim Lampley in our studios in New York. With Marcus Dupree in Mississippi, Oklahoma is having troubles. It is 17-3 Oklahoma State in the third quarter. The Sooners have turned the ball over six times. Oklahoma State has this lead, despite the fact they got only two first downs in the first half, both by penalty. Now back to Keith Jackson. It's been a trying time for the Oklahoma Sooners, and we'll have the Marcus Dupree story for you at halftime. We're expecting to have Dupree and uh, 
find out exactly what he's got in mind. This is Adler running for his life literally as he was forced to scramble out of the pocket. And they run him out of bounds short of the first down. The latest word on Marcus Dupree, and it means a lot in the Big 8 Conference because obviously of his uh, association with Oklahoma. But the information that I have at the moment, whether it's totally correct or not, I don't know. But he and his mother have talked with Carmody, Coach Carmody at Southern Mississippi. And Coach Carmody, in turn, talked to Coach Switzer, which is the way the rules say you must do it. And there's every indication, I guess, that uh, Marcus Dupree will transfer probably to Southern Mississippi. It's a low kick. He takes no advantage of the wind. Irving Pryor makes the catch at the 39, knocked off balance, and falls down at around the 44. It was a 36-yard punt. If he'd been able to get it in the air a little more, he would have gotten a lot more out of it because he had the wind at his back. And Adler's done a good job of kicking uh, for Missouri. He's averaged 42 yards, but he missed that one. Now Nebraska's got some momentum. They're going to have the wind coming up very shortly in the second quarter. One other point I would make on the Marcus Dupree circumstance of all, uh, and I've said it many times across the country at various functions, and one of the first things that a young man should always consider is to whether or not he is ready to leave his home country. And this sort of gives me the feeling that perhaps Marcus Dupree might have been better off if he had stayed around the area of Mississippi. Here's the pitch back to Rozier. Rozier cuts it sharply and runs it to the 50. Companion plays offensively as we look at the Missouri football bench. Companion plays are something that Tom Osmond really stresses, Keith. But the new play, new idea of pitching the ball and cutting back inside has been a basic part of their offense. It doesn't hurt to have folks like uh, uh, Craig and uh, Hip and uh, Rozier to run it, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Uh, Tom Osmond is a master at these companion plays. The blitz, and it pays off this time. Robert Curry, the tackle, found a crack because the blitz was coming by Wilson, and he gets Gill for a loss. When the guard pulls, Curry comes right inside and makes the play uh, in the gap that the guard left, tackles Gill for the loss, something that Missouri needed right there. Big play, throwing them into a passing situation. It is now third down and seven. All is back on the Nebraska 47. loses his footing. Nebraska back to the 41 as Pat Burns, the other defensive tackle, a big 260-pounder out of Seabrook, Maryland, fights his way through there and brings him down on the 41. The first quarter is over. It is Missouri 7, Nebraska 6. As first quarter stats, Rozier has 39 of Nebraska's 40 net yards on the ground. Keep they reflect about what we've seen. The score is even, the stats are even, the time of possession is about the same. Just an even ball game so far. High snap to Livingston, gets his kick away, gets it up, the wind carries it deep, backing up short holes at the 14, gets a little help up to about the 22. 42 yard punt, 7 6 ball game. Here's Jim Lampley. Let's check the Big Ten picture. Ohio State leading Illinois 13-10 in the fourth. Illinois' first league loss if it holds up. Also, Michigan beat Northwestern 35-0 today. They get Iowa and Illinois in the next two weeks. And Iowa tuning up for Michigan is leading Purdue 31-14 in the fourth quarter. Incidentally, Ohio State has lost quarterback Mike Tomczak with a concussion. Back to you, Keith. Well, that's a dandy little case of laryngitis you're carrying around there, Jimbo. Ball is on the 22. First down. Sideline markers got to it down. <laughs> they look over there and see that. They might scare him to death. With that ball off to Eric Crane, the big fullback. He runs it out to the 39 for 17 yards and a first down. Boy, Scott Shockley, the left tackle, wiped off the left side of the line. Watch the hole that Drain has. The blocking on the left side was sensational. As Drain sees the opening, breaks to the outside, comes open into the secondary, and makes a nice game. Now, fans, when you're going against the wind, you change your offense a little bit. Missouri's got to be a little more careful, but be sure and keep the chains moving and the clock running. So it's first down for the Tigers. Moving people around now. Got and they're confused, and they've got to spend the time out. Keith, they used all their time. They were out, and they would have gotten a five-yard penalty if they hadn't called timeout. So Adler goes to talk, try to use that timeout with 14.21 to go first half. 
Auburn at one time trailing in the ball game, 10-7, uh, come rolling back to win impressively, 31-13 over Georgia Tech, and Miami winning in the third quarter over Mississippi State. It is now first down, just short of the 40 for Missouri. They hand the ball off the train a yard. That's all. In to make the play is Ken Graver, number 52, the middle guard, and Mike Knox, number 44, the weak side linebacker. Knox is their leading tackler. You can see he reads the play, uses his hands, then comes forward and helps Graber, number 52, on the play. Knox, number 44. Graber got a chance to get in there early. He's having a heck of a ball game. Big 6'2", 250-pound junior. He's much bigger than the starting nose guard, Tramer, who only weighs 220. So it gives him a little more muscle. Second down and nine from the 41. And go to Drain again. And this Knox again to make the tackle. Mike Knox, 235-pounder from Castle Rock, Colorado. You want to see an outstanding play by the linebacker? What is the linebacker supposed to do? Read the play, react, ward off the blockers, stick his head on the ball carrier, wrap his legs up and pull him down. Perfect illustration of how to play linebacker. And it's third down and eight for Missouri at their own 42. Drain now 43 yards on nine carries. Let's see whether or not Adler decides to put it up. Going to call another timeout. That's three. They have no more. They're having some confusion between the signal and uh, Adler. Somehow they're they're not getting the calls properly, and he's having to call the timeouts, and they'll hurt him if they could hurt him in the late in the second. Uh, well, quarter. you've got a lot of time left to go here in the first half. 13 minutes and nine seconds, and if they do have to punt, they'll be kicking into a win. 17-6, Penn State over Syracuse. So the Lions have won two in a row. They're coming up against West Virginia. Oklahoma State is beating Oklahoma. And I would imagine uh, it's been kind of tough to keep the wheels on the wagon at Oklahoma this week with what all of the noise that's been going on. Hard to keep team concentration with it. Steve, that's a good point because uh, losing to Texas is tough enough, but then have the newspaper men there talking where's uh, uh, their running back uh, and where, what's happening. Uh, disconcerting the team preparation just destroys your, your concentration. You have very little chance to play a good football game. That was to be anticipated, that score. Indiana looking for a win against Michigan State and Washington State getting out to a 7-0 lead over UCLA. Navy, as we told you, had a big day against Princeton and a very big day for Napoleon McCallum, their fine tailback. A win for the Green of Dartmouth today. And holy smokes, look at that. Columbia beat Yale today. Go deep into the record books to find that one, I would expect. And in motion is Ron Floyd. Adler's going to throw it. He throws it, and the pass is complete up around the 47. And you got a penalty flag. Late hit. Could very well be a late hit call against the Huskers. Very definitely, Keith. Unnecessary. Very much unnecessary. The, the receiver was going down short of the first down. As we'll watch it again, take a look at this, fans. The one thing that the rules committee have done is make our college game as safe as possible. Do away with unnecessary injuries. Watch what happens. Here comes 52 Graber. He sticks his headgear oh, into the back. That's what we call spearing, using your headgear as a weapon. Unnecessary. These games have been uh, filled with this kind of stuff now because you go back to the time when uh, Jarvis Redwine. Dead ball, personal foul, Nebraska. Nebraska charging that a Missouri defensive lineman was trying to take his knees away. And then last year you had the Randy Justice Turner Gill incident in which uh, the media wrote it hard and renewed it again prior to this game uh, today. Up the blitz, Keith. It's a first down for Missouri as the 15-yard penalty moves it down inside the Nebraska 38. They keep that ball inside for Eric Drain, the fullback, and he almost blew it out of there. He almost popped out of there. Mike McCashlin, strong safety, brought him down. Drain is an excellent football player, led the team last year in rushing. There's his record so far this year. But Conrad Goody, the right offensive tackle, 6'6", 270 pounds. Larry Bechtel told me he can play football. You can see the hole right there. Good cut, excellent cut by Drain. Cuts back inside and makes the first down. The ball is at the 26 of Nebraska. Missouri leading 7-6 with 12-25 to go in the first half. They ride it off to the fullback again, and he runs into a couple of white shirts that bring him down sharply, one of them being Mark Dom, the other being Mike Knox, the two linebackers for the Huskers. 
Nebraska has always had good linebackers, Keith. I, I, they've always had those that type that can pursue and make the plays. There are the numbers for Eric Drain, the fullback, the leading rusher for the Missouri Tigers, and they look good moving the ball, Keith, against some good blocking. It is second down and six, the ball at the 23 of Nebraska. Adler keeps it, outside he goes, gets pursuit, turns it upfield, goes for the marker, gets a first down. It's inside the 15 at the 14. Dave Ritter was the man pursuing him, but just simply couldn't catch him. Larry Becker, the offensive coordinator, told me yesterday that Marin Adler can operate the form of the offense. That was a perfect illustration. Number 10 came to Missouri, earned his scholarship, bootlegged it outside, saw the down marker, and made the first down. The ball is on the Husker 14. gives it to the tailback and uh, Missouri runs three freshman tailbacks two of them red shirts that was Cameron Riley number 48 carrying there John Red number 29 the other and Ron Floyd who is a true freshman number 25 Keith we approach in four minutes in the second quarter that's the first time the high formation tailback has carried the ball that's right that is most unusual it's a different style they operate a different style of high formation than Nebraska more fullback quarterback Ball is on the 11, second down, seven. Adler coming down on the option. Don't go anywhere. Penalty flag. Might have a little bit of a hold right here. The illegal use of hands. Well, they're probably refused. Well, no, I'm this close to the goal line, I believe I'd move them back. That's a tough decision. I'd be tempted to, to turn it down, but... Uh, it's going to be third down and eight or second down and 13. I believe I'd refuse it, Keith. The odds are... Well, you'd have a whole lot of confidence in your defense yeah. if you did. Yes, well, I, I would. Missouri's already rushed for 88 yards, uh, Keith, and uh, that shows that their game plan uh, is being successful. They may turn it down. Looks like they're going to. We have illegal use of the hands on Missouri. Penalty decline. Third Keith, that's a change in college where it's just a five-yard penalty. In the old days, that was 15 yards, illegal use of the hands. So they've helped the offense, and, and we're getting more scoring because the penalties are less, and you can use your hands in certain ways on offense, particularly on pass protection. Ball is back near the 13. It is third down and eight for Missouri. And that's the motion. Adler keeps it, sets up, looks to throw, goes to the corner, out of bounds, incomplete. The pass was caught by Craig White, all right, but he was off the playing field, so it's an incomplete forward pass, and here comes the kicking team onto the field. Brad Burdick is the Missouri place kicker. You can see on the replay, Craig White, number 87, catches the ball out of bounds. Burton, number 33, does a good job covering it man for man. He's in bounds. He doesn't care if he catches the ball out of bounds. That's as good as having the defender. It'll be a 29-yard try. It's into the win, and it's a sharp, the sharpest angle you could have from the right side. Harry gets it down. The kick is away. And it's good. And at 10 minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half, the Missouri Tigers lead the Nebraska Cornhuskers by a score of 10-6. Chef! 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 A four-point lead for the Missouri Tigers. They will kick off now with 10-41 to play in the first half. Two Nebraska with Jeff Smith 28, Mike Rozier 30. The deep people to receive it for the Huskers. Burdick will kick it into the win. Bad kick knuckleballed it almost whiffed it and it is caught short by Todd Train a tight end and Train runs it back to the 40 so the Huskers had good field position here right here for us Jim Lemley Keith the wild game going on in Birmingham Alabama just after Alan Cockrell had burned the Crimson Tide with his second 80 yard touchdown pass of the day this touchdown run by Moore of Alabama Stretch the Crimson Tide lead in the game to 34-24. They're still in the third. Keith? Hey, Jimmy, here comes Nebraska now with a wind at their back. First down from their 40. 
after a dreadful kickoff by Burdett of Missouri. They take it inside with Shaleen, the fullback, and the mark is up to the 43, giving three yards on the carry. And uh, Illinois has come back to regain the lead against Ohio State. That one has has a lot in it insofar as the Big Ten Conference is concerned. Quick pitch, Rozier looking for some daylight, gets it up to the 45, two yards on the carry. Missouri defensive people are quick. Defensive coaches told me yesterday that they have the fastest defensive team they've had in a number of years. Beginning at linebacker with Tracy Mack, who was a running back last year, runs a 4-3. There are two defensive ends I mentioned earlier. Both run 4-7 to 4-6. They've got good speed. They're playing well. And it's third down and five. That's Steve uh, Swanson in motion, but they uh, keep it in the hands of the quarterback, Turner Gill. And Gill can flat fly. First down, Nebraska at the Missouri 48. Gill looked like a streak when he once broke containment. He saw the down marker. He knew it was third and five. He's an experienced, operated quarterback, one of the best Nebraska has ever had. The only game they've lost with Gill at quarterback was that 27-24 disputed uh, loss to Penn State last year. He's a, he's a great quarterback. First down, call at the Missouri 48. They send Swanson in motion again and shows Gill to throw the ball. He throws it short. It is out to his fullback, Shaleen, and the Missouri Tigers run him down, but look out for a face mask right here as the flag is thrown. An inadvertent face mask. Bobby, yeah. Bobby Bell, number 96, and we talked about the defensive end, has great agility. His daddy was an all-pro football player. His father, number 96, he's going to get knocked down. Watch it. Now he gets up and watch the effort. This is what you have to have if you're going to have a good defensive team. You've got to pursue hard gang tackle and you see him get up and make the play with his teammate number 93 Mark Morgan. They call the face mask on Mark Morgan number 93. He was trying to get a hold of him and he just reached in there and he came away with the face That's mask. That's the first 15 yard face mask we yep. see. Face mask. Missouri unnecessary twisting. That's automatic first down. Well, they, they felt in the judgment of the officials that he he knew he had it and he gave it a jerk. And that's 15 instead of five. That, that once again, that's a safety measure to avoid the unnecessary injuries in the game of football. And it's first down at the Missouri 36 with 8.55 to go in the first half of play. Here comes the blitz. Gill sets it up, gets his pass away to the sideline in a hurry. The pass is complete. Good to Ricky Simmons. And it's short of the first down, but it moves the football inside the Missouri 30. Once again, Turner Gill operates beautifully against the blitz. Coming up, Eusebio Pedroza and Jose Caba. Coming in via satellite, WBA World Featherweight Championship. That'll be a very good fight. I saw Caba beat, he's the only man to have beaten Jackie Beard. Beat him in Miami last year. That could be a very good fight. Caba and Pedroza. Added second down and two for Nebraska. Rozier. Don't know if he made it. Depends on the spot. It's close. Missouri defense are containing Rozier pretty darn well, Keith. They're getting good gang tackling effort. A massive effort from the linebackers and the ends and the safeties. The safety came up and put him away on that last play. Third so, and a half a yard. Ball is sitting right on the 26. When you gamble, you have to have good athletes, otherwise. The Nebraska offense will expose the weakness and hurt you. Rozier, they miss him in the backfield, and he's down to the 20 and a first down. They had a shot at him, sort of half a shot at him in the backfield for a loss, but he's too good for that. You're not going to get him with one hand. One of the new football players on the starting lineup is the tight end. Watch Inga Briston. Number 83, Block Bell. Actually, he's double team also by the wing back. They turn him to the inside. That sets up the play. Gives Rosier room to make his cut and make the first down. At the Missouri 20. They're coming with a blitz. Handed off inside to Shalene. He's loose. He's gone. Touchdown.
25, Mark Shaleen, self-made football player, weighs 240 pounds. Now he weighs 4, 220. Time call, 7.06 to go, first half. Who is America? What a pretty day it is in Columbia, Missouri, on the campus of Old Mizzou, as Nebraska took the time out to go to the sidelines and discuss one point or two. They decide to go for one, send Livingston in. I think that they're thinking was to get in multiples of three to seven, and that's what this will do. The kick is good. So at 7.06, it is now 13-10, Nebraska getting the lead for the first time in the football game. Let's have another look at Chalene's score. Up the middle play, watch the blocking develop. The blitz is coming from the outside. A little quick trap, but Chalene keeps his head down. I don't think anybody knew that he had the ball. Then, since there's no safety, big having the blitz, we see Swanson, number 17, in just a minute, make the block. One thing that Nebraska receivers do, they have to block. Friar, Swanson, Simmons, all of them, Kimball can block, and they can make the play. Sim you can see Swanson make the play on the right of your screen, number 17, that frees Shalene in for the touchdown. I'll tell you, Swanson is not one of those little long-legged, fragile guys out there. He's 5'9", 195 pounds, built like a truck. Watch number 17. Complete football player. The coaches say you've got to play good without the ball as you do it when you've got the football. This is good team effort. The coaches have told me that Nebraska is the best team blocking downfield they've seen in decades. That was a perfect illustration of it. So the Huskers, with the wind at their back now, come to a three-point lead, 13-10, with that time remaining in the first half. Cameron Riley and Ron Floyd now have gone deep for Missouri as uh, Livingston will kick it off. It's a floater, hard to handle. They run together, but they control it. And up the field, penalty flag goes down as Cameron Riley breaks it back to the 45. Look out for a clip. If not a clip, illegal use of hands. Or blocking below the waist. Nope, you're right, it's illegal use of the hands. Keep up. They mark off the penalty against Missouri. We check in with Jimmy again. Keith, a great story if my voice holds out. Illinois has beaten Ohio State for the first time in 16 years, 17-13. Ohio State failed on a fourth down with less than two minutes to go. Illinois promptly drove 80 yards in 37 seconds to win the ball game 17-13. Thomas Brooks the winning touchdown. Both goalposts are down. Back to you, Keith. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you. Yeah, the Illini have become quite a story in the Big Ten this year. They lost all the big guns last year. Tony Eason, the quarterback, but all of a sudden, Mike White's got him in gear, and they come up with a big, big win. And they stress, keep the stress defense. Last year, they were passing. No defense. This year, they're running a lot in sound defense. From the 21, Missouri goes to the offense with Eric Green, the fullback carrying, brought down by Rob Stuckey. Mike Knox also making his presence felt. When you run in the middle, the linebackers have got to cover up for the linemen. They're going to get blocked. They're going to double-team the linemen sometime. And you can see Knox has to play off the blocker with his hands. All, and he knocks the ball loose there. Missouri was very lucky the ball came right back in the hands of the ball carrier. Second down and six from the 25 for the Tigers. Nebraska leading now 13 to 10. Adler goes, gives to Riley, and Riley has popped just as he got the ball by Mike Keeler. But somehow, the youngster hung on to it and spun around and picked up a yard. Keeler is the leading tackler of the down lineman, number 61, for Nebraska. Uh, the coaches tell me that he's a very good technique player. He uh, played the blockers, and on this particular time, he penetrated with a stunt, made a good play. It's third down. Ball is just over the 26. You can call it a long four. Third downs are the most critical downs in football. Adler obviously checking off. Gives the ball to his fullback Drain. And there's nothing there. I, I know that how strongly you feel about third down plays, but I particularly 
like first down plays because they dictate what you're going to do on the rest of them. Well, Tom Osmond, as we've noticed already in this ball game, Tom Osmond is a master at getting the big play on first down. Used to be we, in old days, we ran from inside, tried to pick up four yards, and uh, Tom goes for the big play on first down. Adler, the quarterback, does the punting. He's got a good one, but it's into a good, strong wind, and the wind kills it right at the Nebraska 40, 33 yards on the punt, accepting it, Jeff Smith. And so here come the Cornhuskers, wind at their back, five minutes to go, leading by three. Ryder Cup golf matches. This is the way the scores are at the moment. For a while today, Great Britain and Europe had the lead, but the U.S. comes back to lead eight to seven. And we'll have it for you, as you saw the times reflected there, and then comes game five of the World Series at 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow here on ABC. From the 40 now, let's see what Turner Gill brings to the ball yard this time. Give it to Rozier. Outside he comes. Look out, he may be gone. That is brilliant running by Rozier. Touchdown. If you won't see any better run than Rozier did at that time. At that time. Beautiful blocking, guard pull. It's the reverse play. Something that Nebraska has added in recent years. Misdirection, setting up the, the guard's going to pull, the tackle is going to pull, and good downfield blocking as we've already talked about. Uh, Lou Holtz told me after looking at Nebraska film that they were the best downfield blocking team we've seen in years. Nick is good by Livingston. Rozier now on 13 carries with 107 yards. And Nebraska breaks out on top by a score of 20 to 10. Watch the blocking again. The guard's going to pull and trap out. The tackle leads. The big tackle, Raritan, is pulling up. Watch him lead the ball carrier right there. Blocks the quarterback out. Now watch this move. Boy, that's the move of an All-American football player. Mike Rozier, 150 yards per game average, 7.4 per try. And his 4-4 speed turns it on. There's nobody close. And that gets the home crowd at Missouri very quiet. There's Dean Steinfeld at number 71. He's an All-American guard. He's going to pull. Big, he's a big football player, but he's going to pull and bury Bell on the right side. Watch the blocking develop. Right part of your screen, you're going to see Steinfeld at number 71. I told you he's going to pull and trap out. Boom. You can see the collision right there. That's some block. Now you see the tackle pull and make the next block and set it up for the touchdown. And Nebraska's out to a 10-point lead with four minutes and 51 seconds to play in the first half. And uh, Cameron Riley will go deep with Ron Floyd. Riley 48, Floyd 25. Nebraska, if, if we had learned before we came, if we look at Mike, number 30, Mike Rozier, is one of the most explosive football teams I've ever seen play. What speed they have, the offensive line has muscle, maturity, and the mental ability to pick up any stuff. Livingston's kick is a sailor. They're coming out of the end zone, three yards deep with it. That's Ron Floyd, and he picks his way upfield quite well. Crosses the 30 to the 31, where it's first down for the Tigers. It would seem to me that this might be a critical time in this football game for Missouri. Keith, it is. They've got to keep the ball. There's still four, over four and a half minutes left to play. They've got to keep the clock running and make some first downs and possibly score before the half. They need to get something on the scoreboard uh, to get back in the momentum business. You can't give Nebraska field position with that offense. They will take you to the cleaners. Adler wants to put it up, steps away. Now he's going to get buried back on the 25. And the man that came boring in was Scott Strasburger, 80 it looked like, or rather number 90 that uh, came in to flush him out of the pocket and then Stuckey and company got him. Keith, when, you, when you're in this position like Nebraska is, you ride your defensive end. You want to contain the runs and get a good rush on the passer. Crossberger was back there. Adler had no chance. 
Second sack of the ball game for the defense. Washington leading Stanford in the first quarter, 12-3. Out on the West Coast as their games get going. And it's second down as Adler puts it in the air. The pass is caught. Complete up to the 43. Remember, he had to throw the football into that brisk wind of at least 15, 18, maybe 20 miles an hour. And this thing doesn't wobble. Both these quarterbacks have strong arms. Great this, white catches. Keith, this is the toughest pass to throw in football over the linebacker's head in front of the safety. The timing has to be perfect. Craig White is going to come inside in the deep intermediate zone. Requires time, needs, good accuracy. Back it up here. Back perfect up. execution. 43-yard line, first down, Missouri. They hand the ball off to Cameron Riley. And Nebraska springs him out. And there is no gain. Again, you see Mike Keeler, 6'4", 245, junior from Omaha, leading the tacklers. The Nebraska defense uh, held on for the victory last week. And as we look at the clock and see how much time left to play, the offensive coaches were commenting. I think it made Nebraska a better team, Keith. Uh, the defense held up for them while the offense was sputtering and couldn't score but 14 points. Great football teams, if they are indeed great football teams, have got to win on days when nothing's going right. Good point. They did it last week. Adler back, pressure's on, runs away from it. Going to carry the ball upfield, crosses midfield, dives, and he is just short of his first down at the Nebraska 48. He's about a yard short. I'm really impressed with Adler in a very difficult situation, as we've already previously expressed, going against the wind, good rush, but uh, Nebraska playing the pass, meaning their linebackers are deeping it up. The linemen are taking a start of, in the starter's block to rush, and there's a good little operator. It's third down in the yard for Missouri at the Cornhusker 48. Big pullback, great surge by the right side of the Missouri line. Oh, my goodness, they just blew him off the ball, and it's first down at the 43. Keeler, number 61, is a very fine tackle, but you're going to see him get double team, and all he can do is try to build a point uh, anchor point, but he doesn't do it. The Missouri people move him back in the linebacker's face, knocks, and uh, Drain makes the first down. Laster, good, number good 67, play. at big guard, pulled in there and laid a lick, too. So it's first down for the Tigers at the Cornhusker 43. Adler looking over the middle, throws it hard, gets his man, number 87, Craig White again. And this is a Missouri first down at the Nebraska 27, and White was punished on that catch. Receivers know that when they catch the ball behind the linebackers in front of the safety, they're going to get hit. They've got to protect the ball with their body. Let's see what White does. Let's see if he does protects that ball. Yes, he covers up. He's not trying to run with it. He knows he's going to get hit. He wants to hold on to the pass. It Good takes play. courage to catch that ball yes. down the middle. Yes, it does. 27 of Nebraska, another first down for the Tigers. They're trying to answer with a minute and a half to go in the first half. Nebraska leading 20 to 10, and the ball off to the tailback. It's Ron Floyd, a 5'9", 170-pounder from St. Louis. Keith, we want to go back. Remember that uh, Missouri moved up their, used up their timeouts on uh, plays that they didn't uh, have right at the line of scrimmage. They could use them right now. They have no timeouts remaining. Confusion uh, caused two of them to be spent early. And they're having uh, confusion and they're substituting right now with no timeouts. They're going to have to hustle. 14 seconds left on the 25-second clock. 13, 11, 12. They've got to go. No time for a checkoff now. They've got to go with the play they call. Just get it off. And Adler rolling out. Rose to the man. That's good. Caught by George Shorthose, the flanker. And it's good for a first down out of bounds at the Nebraska 10, stopping the clock with 53 seconds to play in the first half. His real poise uh, as Adler rolls to the left. He's trying to get close to his receiver. And Shorthose is going to catch it. Now, Keith, remember, Shorthose was a starting tailback last year. He ran a beautiful route on All-American candidate Clark. Watch this route. He's going to go inside, make Clark think that he's going inside. Clark was an All-American. And you see him cradle that ball in for the first down. Beautiful execution. The ball is just inside the 10. Adler, 6 out of 7, 41 yards, only 53 seconds to play. Missouri, no timeouts. Nebraska leading by 10 points. Adler gives the ball to Eric Crane. Crane lunges to about the 7, picked up a 2.5 to 3. 
Tigers have got to hurry. The clock is going at 42, 40. Andy Hill, the little guy, goes out at split in. That brings in Thomas. Oh, they wasted a lot of time. Sure right did. 30 seconds. Adler's pass looped to the corner, incomplete, overthrown. He was trying to kill the clock, which he did with a high looping pass, and the clock now stops at 27 seconds. By running on first down without any timeouts, Keith, they used up about 30 seconds and two downs, in effect. One waist down and very short gain on the running situation. Ball is sitting on the Nebraska seven. Most of the plays, that's halftime for you. Highlights of that wild thing going on down at Birmingham between the Volunteers and the Crimson Tide. Alabama losing for the first time this season last week at Penn State. I would imagine they're pretty grouchy about it. And Tennessee having a big win last week against LSU in Knoxville. They did. LSU has never won a ball game up in Knoxville. Incredible. Third down and goal. Adler buried. Sack back on the 15, and the clock is running. They can't stop it. They're trying to get the kicking team on. They've got to hurry. Third sack of the ball game by the Nebraska defense. And they're trying to get the field goal set up now as Perry comes in to hold. Verdict to kick a 30 yard try. Eight, seven. Clock is running. Everybody's in position. Snap is good. Hold is good. The kick is up. The kick is good. Can you believe it? They were able to pull it off <laughs> with one second to play in the first half. Great, great play in by the Missouri team to get there. So with one tick remaining on the clock, Missouri makes the score down Nebraska 20 and the Tigers 13. Soon we have just one second to go in this first half as Brad Burdett, who hit that 30-yard field goal with a mountain on his back, We'll kick it off now. So this kickoff and reception, if there is one, will be the final play of the first half. And what's been an outstanding football game. And still very much in doubt. He skitters it along the ground, and it's finally fielded by Rozier at the 8. At the 23, look out, look out. They finally get him to the shirt tail and bring him down up around the 24. And the first half is over. Anthony Frazier finally brought him down. Big first half for Mike Rozier. And here we are at halftime in Columbia, Missouri, with Nebraska leading the Missouri Tigers by a touchdown, 20 to 13. Right now, let's join Bill. Coach, you said coming into today's game it was going to be a tough one. You got exactly what you thought you were going to get. Yeah, we, we thought they're a very fine football team, and it thought it'd be a tough game. And uh, both teams are doing uh, real well. We've got to do a better job defensively of stopping them. And of course, we were a little bit inconsistent offensively there early. I think that we may have slowed their blitz down a little bit because we popped so. a couple things into us. So we hope we can play well second half. You were hurt a little bit early because of penalties. What happened there? I don't know. They just threw a lot of flags. I guess we'll just have to look at the uh, at the replay. You know, I, I can't tell from field level. I got the worst seat in the house. I'll tell you one thing. When Rozier broke it, it was almost like you diagrammed it on the blackboard. Well, it was well blocked. And Mike uses his blockers awfully well. You know, he hesitated a little bit and really made a fine run. Do you expect that they will blitz you again as much as they did? Oh, they, they will some, but it, maybe not as much because we did hurt them two or three times. I think so. Okay. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. So we'll be back with more of our halftime activities after this commercial message. Columbia, Missouri. It's 20 to 13. Nebraska leading Missouri at halftime. And Keith Jackson along with Coach Frank Royal. Some highlights of the first half. Missouri broke on top with the quarterback, Mar Marlon Adler, taking it in from six yards. And it's a picture book execution of the option play. The good decision by Adler of keeping the ball. The cornerback is going to take the pitch. No one's on the quarterback. And he waltzes into the corner of the end zone and dies for the touchdown. Good execution. Now, let's go to our electronic playbook here to show you the X's and O's of Irving Fryer's 38-yard touchdown pass reception. Well, Irving Fryer is going to run a post route. He's going down deep. The cornerback uh, kind of relaxes a little bit, and then he breaks inside of the cornerback, and he goes in behind the safety man. He's wide open for the touchdown. Now, it would seem to me that, uh, as you indicated earlier, Frank, the simplest thing in the world is to play three deep uh, zone here, and that ain't, that ain't going to happen, as they say. It's really the only bad mistake I've seen by either football team. Uh, when you play three deep, you mean that the safety man, the cornerback, drop back, cover deep. That's their first responsibility. But Gill throws the ball beautifully. Friars in behind them. Maybe they misjudged his speed, but I think it's just a bad play. They missed the extra point, however, on this touchdown, and Missouri still led at this juncture by a score of seven to six. 
Then Missouri added a field goal. Uh, Burdett hitting a 29 yarder to make it a 10 to 6 ball game. But then Nebraska seemed to get their act together and uh, down the field they come. And the payoff was the fullback Mark Shaleen's uh, scamper for the touchdown. Now here's uh, let's go back to our book here. We had the wrong one up there a moment ago. This is the pass play in which Fryer freed himself out running literally the defensive people and scored his touchdown. Just a perfect execution uh, and a good throw into the win uh, by Gill who's making things happen for the Nebraska team. Now let's go to the touchdown that put Nebraska into the lead for the first time on the day as Shaleen blew it up the middle and this is a play that's designed specifically to nullify a team's blitz. When the team blitz is feast coming you, the teams are blitzing against Nebraska from the outside leaving the middle vulnerable in the trap play with a pullback going up the middle the right guard is going to pull all American Stein is going to pull number 67 and uh, Shaleen the pullback hesitates a moment hidden in the middle no safety man touchdown with good block from wing back Swanson so that made it a 13 to uh, a 10 ball game at that point in time and then Mike Rozier turns in a dandy. Sure, he got good blocking here, Frank, but I still say it was a brilliant run by Rozier. Keith and I talked uh, earlier, fans, that it looked to us that every time Rozier got his shoulders turned down the field, he's going to score. Now, he didn't, but if I was on the opposing team, I'd be scared every time he touched the football. Burnett added a 30-yard field goal for Missouri with one second to play, and we're at 2013 halftime. It's here time for a quick word with Warren Powers, the head coach of Missouri. Coach, it seemed you burned your time out so early. There were 13 minutes to go in the first half, and it hurt you later. Well, it did. Uh, we What happened was he, he was running the 25-second clock a little fast. We weren't used to him starting it quite that fast. It's about giving us about five more seconds. And we're having a little bit of confusion on the sidelines. The guys are a little sloppy giving their signals, and they were nervous and excited. And uh, it bothered us early, but I think we got that straightened out. Do you think now. this will be the final score? No, it won't. No, there's going to be more. I hope it's the hope we can score something. We got to stop them. All right, they're ready to play football, Keith. So it's back to you upstairs. All right, Bill, thank you very much. And obviously, Missouri has elected to take the ball. It was their option, so they're going to give. Uh, uh, Nebraska's going to have the wind at their back in the third quarter. Missouri will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. The key thing, though is uh, in, in, in as far as Missouri is concerned and, and they're thinking I am sure oh look at this a very short kick and it's fielded way up field and Missouri is going to start out going into the wind with very good field position so Greg crawl just brought it right on back up across the uh, 35 to near the 40 Bill Weber is a defensive end for Nebraska 210 Mike Keeler 245 Tranmer hurt in the first half uh, to uh, 230 Stuckey at 250 and Strasburger the other defensive end at 205 they're not that big but they're very quick the linebackers are Knox and Dom 235 and 230 and here's the first play of the second half first down call it the 38 of Missouri and Marlon Adler pitches the ball back to Riley and Riley is Pounded down by number 90, Scott Strasburger. Makes a fine defensive play, a loss on the play. Come Those on, are the Harry. people who play in the secondary for Nebraska. Harris is out of Kansas City, 195. They're a good size. McCashel also weighs it at 195. Brett Clark is a 200-pounder. And there, Dave Burke, the other cornerback, is 195. So they've got good size back in their secondary. The ball is just inside the 35. That's a loss, really, of about four yards. So it'll be second down and about 14 for Missouri. Nebraska leading 20 to 13 as we start the second half of play. Adler gives the ball off to the up man out of there. It's Santiago Barbosa starting the second half at fullback for Missouri, a 205-pound sophomore. And he gets it back to just about the original line of scrimmage. So they're looking at third down and long. Third and nine. Atlas had a good first half throwing the ball. Flyers, what do you got? He was six out of eight for 81 yards. Missouri is two out of seven in third down conversions. Today, coming into this ball game, they're running about 50% on third down. Wind is still gusting occasionally, uh, around 20 miles an hour, and back goes Adler to throw. He's got time. Now he's got some green grass to run on. And he's got a first down. 
Keith, that was a critical first down. Incomplete pass would have stopped the clock and forced a punt. Adler shows good judgment. Nebraska covered the receivers. Plenty of time to throw the ball. No one open. Always step up. Look for the receiver. No one there. He had a clear sailing. He saw he could make the first down. He dies and does. It's on the Nebraska 49 with Drain back in now at the fullback spot. And they go triple wide to the bottom of the picture or the right side. And Adler's back to throw it. He's got a penalty flag staring him in the face, though, as he turns it the other way. And they're going to chase him out of bounds. Strasburger shoves him out. But the penalty flag was thrown from this side, and you probably got holding coming up. Missouri hopes that it's uh, illegal use of the hands and not holding the difference of a five yard or a 10 yard penalty. Vance Carlson is the referee. Five yards. Nope. No. Holding. If that hand is open, <laughs> it's sometimes hard to see. If it's open, it's illegal use of hands. If it's closed, it's a grunt. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, ranked number one in the nation, leading the country in rushing, leading the country in scoring. Some people calling them one of the great teams of all time. Here's definition they of the have call. holding. Missouri, first down. But Tom Osborne uh, indicated very clearly yesterday that they expected to have a street fight here in Columbia because they always have a street fight here in Columbia with these Missouri Tigers. It doesn't necessarily uh, limit it either. All right, you've got a new quarterback into the ball game right now. That's Warren Sykes. Sykes comes in on the first and 20. Replacing uh, Adler. Something must have happened to Adler. Oh, look at this. Floyd breaks it out and almost went home for a touchdown. He runs the football all the way down to the Nebraska 33. Ron Floyd, a red shirt freshman, 170 pounder, got a little bit of a crack in the offensive front, and away he flew. Conrad Good, the right tackle, watch it, fans. He opens up the hole, the guards pull, and you can see that the ball carrier jumps right through there. Ron Floyd, number 25, a freshman, and he makes the first down after the penalty. So it is now at the 33 of Nebraska as Missouri comes out storming here in the second half, trying to tie it up. And Seitz gives the ball to the fullback, and there's not much there. Maybe the fall forward will get him close to the 30 as Stuckey brings him down. Now let's check in with Bill Fleming. The report is on the uh, quarterback, just a slight sprain of the left ankle. Adler will be going back in, but they like Seitz, as you know, and so he's going to be given a chance right now, even though Adler could play. Keith, let me tell about Seitz. He's 6'4", 210 pounds, is the one of the fastest backs that they have. Runs a 4'4", and they think he's going to be a great quarterback. Ball is on the Nebraska 31, second down, 8 for Missouri. And they reverse it back into traffic, but handling the play very well is Riley. Riley, just a little one-step delay, turns it back the other way and gets himself across the 20 for another first down. Keith, what a contrast. His sights, a highly recruited youngster by most of the schools in this part of the country. Tremendous potential and replacing the Marin Adler, who was a walk-on. But the last play, Keith, was the same play that Nebraska ran for the touchdown with uh, Rozier, the reverse play. Big play again. Ball is on the Husker 19. First down, Missouri. Fumble. Keith, and one, Missouri keeps it as Sites covers it. Keith, one of the things I started to say, the problem with the second quarterback coming in is the snap. The, quarter, the second quarterback doesn't get but about 25% of the snaps, and therefore the exchange is always a problem. It's always a problem. There was an example as Adler comes back into the ball game. Had his ankle taped. He's back in now, and Sites goes to the sidelines. Did a good job in replacing Adler for the moment. The ball is just short of the 20. We're at his second down. Call it 11 for Missouri. And Adler hands the ball off to the tailback. And finding some room is Cameron Riley. He struggles to the 11. He is going to be two yards short of his first down. So it'll be third and two. Keep that sensational running. The tailbacks have really come in this half with three great runs. Watch the blocking on the right side of the line. You can see that uh, Riley gets right to the line of scrimmage. There's not much there. Now you see a little hole opening up. Linebackers miss him. Dom misses him. Now he turns downfield, north and south, protects the football, fights for extra yardage. Third down and two for Missouri. At the Nebraska 11. Oscars lead by seven, 20 to 13. 
see if they option here. Elliott off to the fullback, Drain, and Drain just defend. No, it's Barbosa, and it depends on where they give him on the spot. Keith, they gave him enough spot for the first down. The flag in on the side gave him enough yards. He was hanging on to that ball, though, to make that, I'm sure he got all out of the spot he could get. That's a good point, because the players are programmed or taught to protect the football on this part of the field and particularly on short yardage. It's going to be close. Boy, well, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. He's going to he be looking at it. fourth down and about six inches. You go for it. At this point, I'd say so. I'd be tempted to go for it right now. Go for the first down. You, you're playing the number one team in the nation. You have momentum. Offensive line's got to be able to do it for you. You're going to win in the last part of this ball game. They've got Drain back in there at fullback now. He is a tough guy. The short yard is man. Here comes the eight-man blitz. Drain's got it. Sticks his helmet in the stack. Fumble the ball, Pete. The ball came back. He did not make it unless they gave him a better spot. I don't think he made it. Missouri. Never had a real grip on it, I don't think. Missouri players say that he did. We cannot see the spot from this vantage point. You can hear the wind whistling across our microphones upstairs. Yes, he did make it. You can see the spot from here. He had to go past the one-yard line. Eleven, the nine-yard line is the mark, and he looks like he's beyond the nine. No, he didn't. Didn't either. make it. Just missed it. Just barely missed it. So the Husker defense holds against Missouri when it looked like the Tiger. Look how close it was, about three inches. Well, it was the Nebraska defense that uh, took hold of things in the second half. It's still water last week. You've got a timeout. Nine minutes and 33 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Frank has just made a point, I think, that's most valid. They used almost five, uh, a little over five minutes on the clock going into the wind. They will have the wind in the fourth quarter. Now it's Nebraska to the attack. Rozier looking for the outside. And he moves it from the nine up across the 15. Rozier now, if, with a pickup there, has moved past 1,000 yards. Half sales, defensive end, 220. Steve Runyon, uh, defensive tackle. Steve Lachey, 255 at the nose guard. Curry, 265 at tackle. And Bobby Bell, 215 at defensive end. Linebackers are Tracy Mack, 220, and Jay Wilson, 215. And it's second down, call it four for Nebraska. They send it in the middle, and you can hear the whacking and cracking four blocks away as he picks up a couple of yards near the 17. Tracy Mack hits Shaleen. The secondary for Missouri is Matijak, and he got burned on the long pass play of 38 yards to uh, Irving Fryer. Rico Hawkins, Jerome Caver weighs in at 190, Hawkins 185, and Wallace Snowden at 190. They've got good sides in the secondary as well. Back goes Turner Gill, throws it out, pass good to Irving Fryer. Caught and dragged down, open field tackle on the 20. Brought down by Jerome Caver, but it is a first down for Nebraska. So the Huskers have wiggled off the hook here, and they keep the ball. There's the offensive alignment for Nebraska. One thing that Missouri wants to do is make Nebraska go by bits and pieces. No big plays. They were burned by the blitz. They've got to be more cautious this half. From the 21, they mark it. First down, Huskers. Looked like Gill got it back. Now, to go back to that point, though, the fact that even though Missouri came away empty on that uh, march downfield, Frank, the fact that they used up so much time on the clock may prove to be, look at this, 41-34, Tennessee now leading Alabama. What a ball game they've got going. But Keith, you're right. That's the, the big point. Using up the clock as much as you can. Keep it running and keep Nebraska's offense on the bench when you're going into the win. Second down, 11 for the Huskers now from their own 20. Gill drops. Gonna run it. He can fly. And he turns his body away from the tacklers and does not get a whole lot of punishment on the hit as he gets it to near the 29. Turner Gill 
Just a sensational football player running and passing. Frank Sire has a big day as Kansas, an up and coming program under new coach Mike Gottfried over there. And Arizona State jumping all over USC. That's a big ball game for Arizona State because they can go to the Rose Bowl this year. And they don't play one. Third down and two and a half. Bill's pass. Almost picked off. Read beautifully by Matishak. And Terry almost had himself six points. All he had to do was catch it and he could have waltzed into the end zone. He played it perfectly. He gambled, fans. What the top? He's got deep coverage, but he sees the pattern on the out that Gill had thrown earlier. He breaks in front. All he's got to do to catch it is a touchdown. And Here. so the Missouri defense holds. Gill should not have thrown that one. You can see the long throw to the flat gives the defensive back time to break up in front. Livingston in the punt. They stop it. Keith, I believe they're going to call the offensive center moving before the snap. Uh, the Missouri coaches will complain if that was a point anyway. Let's see. Yep. That'll back them up five more. So that's what? The fourth flag in the ball game, I think it is. Uh, fifth flag in the ball game against uh, Nebraska for a total of 34 yards. Texas rolling today and could conceivably gain number yeah, one. Ball foul. Illegal procedure. Movement in the line. Nebraska. West Virginia rolling along undefeated. Auburn finally coming alive against Georgia Tech and Illinois beat Ohio State 17-13 today. Now Livingston to punt. Wins it his back. Remember, if he gets it up, the win will help him. Good spin on the ball, and it's short holes at the 36. Pinned down right there. He's brought down by Brad Mewing. And so Missouri will have the ball first down at the 36. It was a 41-yard kick. If Missouri gets out of this third quarter going into the wind, boiling by only seven, look out. We have technical difficulties at our remote, and we will be going back as rapidly as we can to Columbia, Missouri, where the Missouri-Nebraska game is ongoing. Meanwhile, we will report one final in the Big 8. Oklahoma, with a miracle comeback, came back to defeat Oklahoma State 21-20 with the help of an onside kickoff and a field goal in the closing moments. You've been following the movements the last three days of Marcus Dupree. We had been scheduled today to have a live interview at halftime between myself and Marcus Dupree. <clears throat> an interview to which Marcus agreed this morning. Later on, he changed his mind under pressure from another network, which incurred that it would be unfair for him to do a live interview with us and not with them. And therefore, Marcus decided that he would not appear live with us today. This kind of indecision is, of course, emblematic of precisely the problems that Marcus has experienced in the past two years. Just a few moments ago on the phone, he told me that he will definitely go to school at Southern Mississippi and that he will sit out the year necessary to resume college football eligibility at Southern Mississippi. Are we ready to go back to Nebraska? We are not ready to go back to Nebraska and Columbia, so, or, and Missouri and Columbia, so quickly. Let's give you two West Coast scores, which we weren't able to give you earlier. I pardon, or I apologize for my laryngitis. Washington leading Stanford 18 to three at halftime. And also on the West Coast, as we told you, Southern Cal is trailing Arizona State 24 to nothing. UCLA is leading Washington State 10-7 now in the third quarter. our troubles. We'll give you some audio coverage of it here. It is fourth down and two feet for Missouri. They're going for it from their own 45. If they fail, Nebraska gets the ball in Missouri's side of the field. After the quarterback kept it, turned it upfield. Looks like he's got a first down. On fourth and two feet, a gamble by Warren Powers, sending his Missouri Tigers out to attack. The quarterback turned around on an old spinner play, if nothing else to call it, and stuck his head in there and got the first down. What did he get near the 47? Keith, he was, it was an option play, but he saw a little opening following the fullback, and that's what he's called to do. If there is yards after you fake the fullback, go right behind him for the first down. Good play on Atlas Park. Ball at their 47. Ball is out near the 47. First down for Missouri. Nebraska leading by seven. Four minutes and 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Mullen Adler rolls it out to throw. He has a lot of time. He throws it as far as he can throw it into the wind. And it is... Dave 
Burke for the ball, and it's first down and goal to go for Missouri at the Nebraska 8. He's had the most miraculous catch that I've seen this year. I thought the ball was intercepted. From this viewpoint, it looked like Burke played it perfectly. All he had to do was go up and catch it. Somehow, White went over him, facing the, the ball from being uh, on the outside of the defender, had the advantage, and it complete pass. First down and goal to go now, Missouri, with 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Adler sets him up. He's got Barbosa at fullback and Riley at tailback. He turns. He's got it. He looks in the corner. He throws back over the middle and is almost intercepted. Sliding across the defensive end, covering the short zone, Bill Weber. Weber had it in his hands. He was so surprised when the ball got there, he did not hold on. He's got a penalty flag. Looks like it's going against Nebraska. That'll be the sixth flag of the day against the Huskers, and that's where it's going. See, that's a very, very tough penalty. They had, uh, Missouri had first and eight. Now they're going to have, what, uh, first and one. That's called to the referee. And defensive turn. Nebraska needs his own one-yard line. Defensive pass interference, first down and goal to go, Missouri on the Nebraska one. 20 to 13 ball game. The Huskers coming in overwhelmingly all season long. Choice for number one. Now being seriously challenged by the Missouri Tigers in Columbia. Barbosa and Riley set up behind Adler. Adler fumbles the football. It's still rolling around. Nebraska's got the ball. Adler could not come away with a snap, fumble the football, and the Cornhuskers, Mike Keeler, comes out of there with it. And for the second time in the third quarter, the Missouri Tigers are down knocking on the door, and they come away empty. Well, that was a tough break. There should be zero deviation on that snap. That's too bad for Missouri part. Great break for Nebraska. Ball is on the three. The Nebraska Cornhuskers have regained possession of it. Now let's go back here and some of the action that we have missed while we've been having our technical troubles here. Here is a long pass play from Adler to Craig White. They have been a working combination all day. Adler going into the wind through the football, 45 yards, which is just about as far as he could possibly throw it. And watch this miraculous catch now by Craig White. Burke, number 33, defensive back, has perfect position. He should come up with the ball, but he gets out jumped as White out jumps him for the ball and comes down with a sensational catch on the three-yard line. Then a penalty moves Missouri down to the one. First and goal from the one. Now watch Adler. Cannot come off the snap with it. The ball squirts away from him. And Mike Keeler, number 61, the big defensive tackle, covers it. The first turnover in the ball game. And it got to take a little heart out of the Missouri Tigers oh, right now. Oh, it must, Keith. It, one thing we coaches learn the hard way, when you reverse turn, that is the quarterback, reverse turns, and the play is going to the left, and the center's blocking to the left, it leaves a gap. The quarterback has to go with the center, and he pulled out early and left the ball on the ground. One other play while we were in trouble there, and we couldn't show you the picture, was a fourth down and two-foot play in which the quarterback, Adler, worked the spinner and picked up the first down from the Missouri. 45 so it took a fair amount of daring on the part of Warren Powers to go for it on his side of the field but he got it then the big pass play and then the sky fell this quarter has been all Missouri the offense has done a great job just didn't get it in the end zone when they had the chance so Nebraska from their three now leading 20 to 13 first down Turner Gill gives the football off to Mike Rozier and he just comes pounding upfield to close to the eight-yard line. He got the better part of five yards on that carry. I think they'll give him four as they put it down near the seven. That's Turner Gill, seven out of nine, 83 yards, one touchdown. Fans on this part of the field, there's nothing four. fancy. Who wins the line of scrimmage? That length of the ball, 13 inches, who controls that area? Is I, don't turn trust, the I wouldn't trust Tom Osborne because this is a kind of a place on the field where he might try to hit you with a big one. That's the reverse plate for score, though. That's going to be a first down, and again, that's just plain hard running by a very talented football player, Mike Rozier. They had him and uh, couldn't hold him. 
Coming up, Game 5, World Series tomorrow. Scott McGregor, Charles Hudson. McGregor trying to slam the door on the Phillies after the Baltimore won today. That'll be at 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow here on ABC. The ball is at the 14, where it is a first down for Nebraska. So the Missouri defense couldn't keep them pinned up. Get out, get a little breathing room. Gill gives it to Rozier again. And why not? He goes up to the uh, 19. Use your muscle in this part of the field. And Nebraska has muscle with that offensive line of scrimmage. Most coaches that played against them say that this is maybe the best offensive line Nebraska has had. Use them. Go right at the, the opposing team. Right at the heart of it. Grind it out till you get some running room. Rozier now 17 carries, 131 yards. He is the first running back of the year to go over 1,000 yards. He has done it already today. it up to the 25 and if he in fact has the 25 and he does it is a first down Keith the Missouri has departed from their first half strategy as we look at the great game that Bernie Kosar had from Miami going back Missouri has quit blitzing Tom Osmond said that the half that he thought they would Missouri has not blitzed this half <laughs> let me correct myself because I believe that McCallum of Navy would have been the first back this year to go to the thousand because uh, he would have gained the rushing leadership today over Rozier depending on how many yards Mike winds up with they're just keeping it in the middle and just grinding it out pounding along but this is working somewhat to the advantage of Missouri because the Missouri is going into the wind and the wind is a big factor right now it looks like it's going about 15 miles an hour affects the kicking game affects field position it's been all Missouri this half, this third quarter even though they're going into the wind. From the 27. Werner Gills passes away, got a man incomplete. Led him just a little too much. He was Irving Fryer, and once again, the speed of Fryer had put him clear. It would have taken a perfect throw, a very difficult pass for Turner Gill, throwing the ball, going in between the safety man and the cornerback. Watch, he's going to run right... Fry's going to run right by the cornerback. Now the safety's going to come in the picture, but not until it's been too late. The ball's low, outside. Hawkins is close, but not there, incomplete. So it is third down and long. Third down and eight for Turner Gill. Now they'll blitz, I believe. Nope. Going to put it up. All day to throw over the middle. Pass is good. Caught by Shane Swanson. That stocky, tough wing back. Once again, the timing has to be perfect. Good protection first. When you have this kind of protection, you spread the defense. The linebackers have a difficult time. Swanson's crossing over in between the linebackers. Gill's right on target. Watch Swanson. Now he's going to work his way across and find the spot. Watch him. When he gets in open, watch him right there. Now pull up. Slow up. Choke your motor. Now slow down because you're running the defender uh, Brown if you don't. Good execution. Choke your motor. Choke your motor. <laughs> From the 40, first down for the Huskers. Gill turns it inside, coming back the other way. Fumble out of that. Irving Fryer running the reverse for the first time today, but an arm tackles, twisting the ball away from him. And fortunately for the Huskers and Fryer, the ball tumbles out of bounds. For two decades, you could read the fullback and stop the eye formation. Tom Osmond came up with the wing back reverse, the tail back reverse, as the ball goes out of bounds, very lucky break for Nebraska, but the reverse is the base part of the offense today in the high formation. Nebraska keeping the ball at their own 48, where it is second down and two. Minute and seven left to play in the third quarter. Turner Gill gives it to Rozier, and Mike's still pounding. It takes a platoon to bring him down. He's down near the 45. Let me straighten myself out here on this business of who's got a 1,000 and who has the lead. McCallum of Navy has 946 yards in six games. Nebraska playing in their seventh. Rozier is, in fact, the first man to go for over the 1,000-yard mark in this season. But he's going to have to have an awfully big second half in order to regain the average per game. He's 199 yards in the second half. It's first down, Nebraska. Just short of the Missouri 45 with 35 seconds to play in the third quarter. Inside it goes with Shaleen. And it looks like... He will have his first down. Well, okay, Keith, that was the first down play. I'm sorry, he was, wasn't he? Yes, the, the fumble gave him the first down. Involved here with all of his running <laughs> steps. <laughs> well, it's important. I tell you, 
Nebraska has never had uh, uh, the nation's leading ball carrier. As much as they've run the football, they've never had a runner that led the nation in rushing. Fryer now will go to the top of the picture, and now he comes back into the wingback position. And uh, whistle stop him. And Nebraska is charged with a timeout as Turner Gill comes to the sidelines. There was some confusion. There were two people out there, at least two, didn't know where they should be and what was going to happen. So the clock stops with three seconds to play. We've got three seconds to play in the third quarter. It's the last play of the quarter with the wind at the back of Nebraska. What do you think, Coach? I think they may go deep with a pass to take advantage of the wind the last uh, play. He comes, throws it short, though, to Rozier, and Rozier trying to get him out there one-on-one, -on -one, but the trailing man caught him with a coattail and brought him down. The third quarter is over. Nebraska 20, Missouri 13. And we will continue after this commercial message and a word from our cameraman Mike Friedman manning the lens in the end zone as we go to the final 15 minutes of this football game with Nebraska, number one of the nation, leading Missouri 20 to 13. They have the football, third down and six. The ball is at the Missouri 41. Missouri had opportunities in the third quarter to literally have taken the lead, but they did not. And the pass complete to Irving Fryer. Fryer breaks it big inside the 25 and down at the 22. First now it becomes a question of depth and perseverance and endurance. First time that Missouri has blitzed, and you can see that Nebraska was ready for it. Fryer comes right over the middle. No one is there. Wide open, just a little easy toss from Gill. But the big point is that Gill kept his poise and confidence when the blitz was coming. He believed his team would protect, and he hits Fryer. You can see what a great athlete Irving Fryer is. Rozier hit at the 21 and stopped at the 21. Here is another point for you to consider as we wind through this final quarter of play. Nebraska has one timeout remaining. Missouri all three. The win now rests in the favor of the Tigers, but the scoreboard still shows Nebraska leading. And Nebraska's only tried one field goal this year, and that was in the opening game against Nebraska. Uh, excuse me, against uh, Penn State. Right <laughs> here! Gilbert throws it short, has his man, the tight end, Todd Frayne. Frayne was a fellow who came up with a big play last week for them against Oklahoma State. And the play is good inside the 10. First and goal to go, Nebraska at the Missouri 8. Is there any reason to doubt that a quarterback is the key man on a football team? Again, the blitz, protection, in, crossing, tight end. Safety man could not cover him. Linebacker was trying there. Get there also, first down. Beautiful execution by Gill. First down and goal to go, Nebraska. Tough to hold him this close. They don't make a mistake, they may stick it in the end zone. There goes Rozier. And he pounds along to about the six. Missouri defense was ninth in the nation coming into this ball game, allowing only 92 yards rushing, but they haven't faced anybody like the, the, the Nebraska team. They are awesome with their lineman, line blocking and the speed in the secondary and the operation of the quarterback, Turner Gill, as we look at Tom Osborne. As I said earlier, I think he's unsurpassed as an offensive uh, genius. Second down and goal from the six for the Huskers. Rozier goes in motion. Shalene over the top. They'll mark him inside the five near the four. It'll be third down and goal. First and eight. When uh, Nebraska started on, in this uh, series, is tough to score from against a good defensive team, Keith. Normally, you either have to run wide or throw the ball. I believe this is a passing down coming up, or an option down at least. Missouri thinks so. They put in some extra people. From the four, third and goal. Hills pass in the end zone. Touchdown to Irving Fryer. Break in the secondary. As soon as he gets open, he turns around. Watch him. Turn around right there. Now the ball is going to be there. Watch him leap. Trail the ball in. Look how high he goes for it. Juggles it for a moment. Pulls it in for the touchdown. And 12 minutes and 50 seconds to play in the football game. Scott Livingston now for the extra point try. Some people say that Irvin Fryer 
may be the best all-around athlete in America. He's definitely the best all-purpose player in America. The kick is good. And so now, 14-point lead for the Nebraska Cornhuskers with 12.50 to play. Who makes the best-selling radials in America? Goodyear. We outsell all foreign radials combined. One reason, the Goodyear Arriva. It gives you long tread life. And best of all... Most football game, that is an impressive drive. Keith, it definitely is. But one thing that I've, coaches have seen happen so many times, one team is going in to score, tie the ball game up, they fumble or fail to score, another team gets the momentum, and down the field they go, and particularly a team like Nebraska. Awesome, awesome football team is Nebraska. Wingard kicks off, kicks it very high and quite short. Ball bounces around, and uh, Missouri has to cover it up on the 23. So Ron Floyd never had a chance to get a handle on it and run with it, as the kick was very high in the air and quite short. Keep Iowa beat Purdue today, 31 to 14. Michigan beat Northwestern today, 35 to nothing. Illinois beat Ohio State. So next Saturday here on ABC at 12 noon Eastern Time, we will have the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Michigan Wolverines from Ann Arbor. A lot on that one in the Big Ten Rose Bowl chase. First down for Missouri. We're in Big Eight country right now, and Missouri trying to fight back as they trail by 14. The Nebraska defense has blunted Missouri's efforts to get into a tie, and conceivably handling the ball correctly, they might well have taken the lead. But instead, they got no points in the third quarter after two glorious opportunities. Eric Drain, their fullback, is hurt right now and down on the field. So there is a timeout for Eric Drain with 12.32 to play in the ball game and Nebraska leading 27 to 13. Talking about a while ago when Missouri was stopped at the nine and then had the ball first and goal actually on the one. Fumbled it, Nebraska recovered on the three. Keith on that drive at the nine, they had two tries for a yard. Couldn't make the one yard for the first down. Right now, it's second down and eight from the 24. Marlon Adler looking for some help. Going to be dragged down from behind and brought down at the 19 by Ken Graber, who has been a sensational defensive player since coming on in relief of Mike Cranmer. Graber, the nose guard, weighs 250 pounds. He's much bigger than Cranman, the starting nose guard, but he showed speed on that occasion, chasing the quarterback Adler down in a very big play for Nebraska, giving the Missouri third and long, obvious passing down. Third and 14 from the 19. Eric Drain, pinch nerve neck, I expect him back. 11 minutes and 50 seconds to play in the game. 14-point lead in Nebraska. Adler steps up, lets it go to the sidelines, and uh, the pass is incomplete. George Shorthose, the wingback for Flanker, had gone in motion. Coming up the sidelines, and Shorthose had stopped. I don't think he expected the ball to come across fields here, so he literally had taken himself out of the play, even though there were two white shirts over there defending. Short so the uh, Nebraska defense once again holds. Well, when you, when you take the lead 14 points, you change your defensive strategy. Now you lay years back and rush the passer and force them to try to run the ball. Big advantage for the defense. Bad kick by Adler. Fumbled around a little bit by Smith. Now he's got some help, and he comes back across midfield, and he has stopped at the Missouri 44. I go back to three words I used a while ago, uh, but in particular, I think one word applies here as the... Uh, you call it endurance, I guess, if you want to, but I would call it bench. Keith, if Nebraska has the depth. If, if depth is important, then Nebraska has the best football team in America because they, their second team is a, just a little of a drop off from their first. And they have the ball first down on the Missouri 44. 11 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. They hand it off inside to Shaleen. And Shaleen, the fullback, goes down to the Missouri 36. Last week, Nebraska's offensive team and defensive team got tired. Keith. They hadn't played over 30 minutes in any of the early ball games and having to play 60 against Oklahoma State. They were a little bit tired. They look fresh right now. They have the momentum. They've got a good takeoff in that line of scrimmage. 14-point lead and time on their side. Rozier pitches it back to form a flea flicker for Gill's pass downfield incomplete. 
The pass intended for Scott Kimball. The split in, a junior out of Camarillo, California. Good waist down, second down one. Uh, you can go for the big play knowing that uh, you've got such speed and agility in that backfield, they're not likely to get tackled for a loss. So now they have third and one. They have two downs to make their first down if they desire. Coming up next Saturday here on ABC, Iowa at Michigan. Chuck Long of Iowa quarterback and Steve Smith of Michigan, two fine, fine operators. On third and one, Shaleen, he's got it. And so Nebraska will have four more snaps. And the clock running along at 10.48 to play in the ball game. Nebraska with one timeout remaining. It becomes a lesser problem when you have a 14-point lead with 10.45 to play. And that offensive line, I think we should really give praise to the, to the Nebraska offensive line. They've done a magnificent job of opening holes. That is the fifth largest crowd ever here at Columbia, 72-348. Turner Gill calling his own number. Turns it across the 30, down at the 27. Keith, how would you defense? I'm just thinking from, if I was coaching again, how would I defense Nebraska? Would you concentrate on Rozier? Would you, uh, Shalene, the fullback, who runs 4-5? And how would you cover Irvin Fry? Forget it, stay on the <laughs> golf course. <laughs> Good decision, I think I'll do it. <laughs> 10 minutes to go in the game, if Mike Rozier, Four men hit him, and uh, the fifth one finally brought him down. Rico Hawkins finally brought him down. Tracy Mack was a, incidentally, was a running back last year, number 36. He's moved to linebacker, has great speed. He's improving every ball game. He's made some good plays. Here's one of them right here as he recognized the play, went into the backfield, and helped two of his teammates drug Rosier down. One, two, three, four. Right? Good pursuit. It's third and five. Gill's pass thrown short. Caught. Guess who? Well, you folks in Nebraska certainly don't have to guess. You know him. But his name is Fryer. He, like Rozier, coming to Lincoln, Nebraska from New Jersey to play their college football. Keith Fryer had caught six passes before this one for 93 yards and two touchdowns. The thing that he does, he's an all-purpose back. Punt returner, kickoff returner, pass receiver, blocker, and an excellent runner. There he goes in motion. The safety cannot get up in time to cover him. The safety had come all the way across. You can see how wide open he is. Gill very wisely lays it out with tissue paper. Easy to catch. Fry makes the first down. And the folks wearing red send up a cheer as they measure for and get the first down. The ball just inside the Missouri 23. Oh, this Nebraska team has really been impressive, and Missouri's played a great ball game up until now. The momentum has left. That's Rozier. And they finally shove him out of bounds after he picks up five. Rico Hawkins finally getting him. And time definitely on the side of the Huskers now at 9.14 to play in the ball game. Keith, when, when we started getting ready for this ball game, we had been asked many times, is Nebraska the best team we've ever seen or the best team this year? I would say they're one of the best teams, particularly offensively, I've ever seen. And their defense has had enough really courage to, to stay in there and play a good ball game. Offensively, they're the best I've seen in a long time. Shalene running up the middle and he drew a crowd but he didn't have the ball Turner Gill still had it Keith it's easy to say they're the best team but why they're the best team first the offensive line is sensational right there is a good reason they're number one of the best offensive team uh, I think that his concept of offense is ahead of most coaches in America today Tom Osmond but the speed in the backfield and the operation of Gill I don't know what you would do to defense they're just sensational offensively Third down and seven. Hill's pass, good to Rozier. Got him one-on-one. -on -one. And he will put the shoulder pad on you. He's knocked out of bounds at the 10. That will be a first down for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Terry Matichak finally knocked him out. And talking about Rozier, and how good is Rozier? He, obviously, he's the leading uh, highest trophy candidate, along with Steve Young, I guess, of Brigham Young and some others. But to me, Rozier is tougher inside than I thought he was. I knew he could run outside. He's a good receiver. As you can see there, he catches the ball. One man seldom gets him down. The initial hit takes two or three. 
It's first and goal just inside the 10 for Nebraska with eight and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Pitch it back to Rozier to the corner. He goes. Touchdown. <laughs> Only Johnny Rogers has scored more points at Nebraska. Darn impressive run, fans. Watch the blocking. And Brazier starts inside, nothing there. You have to be a great back. Of course, you get a great, great block from All-American Steinfeld, the right guard. But watch him tiptoe down the boundary, doesn't get knocked out of bounds, and scores again for Nebraska. And it's suddenly 33-13 with Livingston in for the extra point try. Gill holds it, kicks up, and good. Eight minutes and 26 seconds to play in the football game, and the Cornhuskers now starting to assert themselves. 34-13. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers take it in from 44 yards with eight minutes and 26 seconds to play in the game to run out to a 21-point lead, 34-13. And Dan Wingard is in to kick off with Riley and Floyd deep for Missouri. Missouri had two big chances to score in the third quarter. They couldn't do it. Fumbled it away on the one-yard line on first and goal. And Nebraska's making them pay for it. Wingard hits it high, deep, hanging up there in the wind. At the one, it is Riley. At the 23. We mentioned that Rozier and Fryer came from New Jersey. I asked Irving about the culture shock of the move. Yeah, it was my freshman year. It took me a long time to adapt to it. Life out there is a little bit slower than it is back in New Jersey, but this is something that I had to do. I had to uh, make the adjustment, grow up, and uh, you know, get my head together. I'm out in Nebraska doing my thing, and everybody's back home, so home's not going anywhere. I'll be finished here this year, so uh, maybe I'll be able to get back home. From the 22, Adler's pass complete to Andy Hill, and Hill has wrestled down up around the 27. Short gain on the play. ABC's NFL Monday night presentation next Monday night at 9 Eastern time. Six out on the West Coast. Washington Redskins and the Green Bay Packers. The Redskins are rolling along. That game they had with the Raiders, mighty big ball game for them to win. They did it the hard way coming from behind. Now they seem to be on a roll. Going back to the, to the Washington game again. Hey, uh, hey, Thiessman hey, and Riggins and that offense of Joe Diaz have been sensational all year long. Back goes Adler to throw on second down and four. His pass is away. The pass is complete. Good for a first down at midfield. Craig White, number 87, I think it was. Nope, George Shorthose was the man. Shorthose pulls it down. Beautiful read. The read here, the McCashlin you, on the left of your screen when the ball's in there. Good protection first. You're going to see McCashlin come up, and he takes the man in the flat and leaves the receiver open short holes for the first down. Two men in one zone making a single def defender choose, and he chose the wrong man. And it's at midfield, first down Missouri with seven and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Adler looking around for some help. Can't find anybody. Now he's got thundering hooves in his ears, and he's got two yards as he pulls it down and goes out of bounds around the 48. The Texas Longhorns winning today 31-3 over, excuse me, Arkansas. I get a glare every time I say oh, that. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was a surprise. Texas has a great football team. We knew that. They, Freddie Akers has recruited uh, uh, probably better than anybody in America in the last three or four years. He has a good staff, and what a defense that Texas uh, has and puts on that field. Point being, uh, Frank, that they gained some in last week's polls yes. for number one over their win today. Uh, Nebraska now yeah. has probably solidified the, their continuity as number one by leading 21 points. Missouri trying to attack that as Craig White makes the reception short of the first down for the Tigers. And we move inside seven minutes to play in the ball game. The World Series game four today. Baltimore winning it five to four and uh, the Orioles take a three to one lead in the series and they've got their tough left hander Scotty McGregor going tomorrow against the rookie right hander for the Phillies Charles Hudson you'll see it here on ABC at 430 Eastern Daylight Time it's third down and three for Missouri and Adler rolls it out gets his pass off the pass is caught by Barbosa the fullback but he is brought down by Brett Clark short of the first down it appears just short of it. As we look at Barbosa, who was the tailback, the leading Russia, 
for uh, Missouri last year, moving the fullback, and shows right there he's going to be a good football player, Keith. Good speed, good hands, and we've already seen him run and block. Well, both uh, Barbosa and Drain are sophomores. The three tailbacks are freshmen, red shirts. And Adler has, the quarterback has another year. So that Missouri will be good. Fourth and a half a yard. Barbosa bangs in for the first down to the Nebraska 38. Five minutes and 54 seconds to play in the football game. I see no reason not to rank Nebraska number one. Do you? Well, Keith, uh, historically, we don't change. Uh, usually, I say, we don't change uh, from one to two unless one team loses. As a rule, it just doesn't happen. You keep the first team that's been there all year uh, in that position until someone beats them. Adler ducks away and then loses his footing as he tries to cut it back against the grain, and he'll have a yard or so on the play. Tom Osmond will use that pole uh, to advantage during the week. Texas will probably gain some, and he'll get his team ready a little bit, and as the fans will if Tom doesn't use it. As we look at Tom Osmond, a very uncommon man to me. He's uh, Keith, I've said this, when I was coaching, I ran into him recruiting more than any other head coach in America. He really works at his game. That is professional. Hey, come on, He's not big, big and strong in a rubber chicken. Anymore. He'd rather go out and look at football players. Darn right. And uh, football players like Doug Herman now, who is in there along with Jim Scow at the tackle spots, and they have just sacked Marlon Adler. The loss is all the way back to the 45. I think it's smart to put in fresh linemen. They're tired, Keith. We talked about that. They're ahead. Give those youngsters some chance to play as alternate unit. Scow has already had three sacks this year. Very quick player. Talking to the coaches, he's not as big as some of the others, but they say he can really rush the pass. So it's third down and right at 20. Adler going for all he can get, and it's intercepted. Down on the six by Dave Burke. Well, Burke got burned one time today, but he didn't get burned that time. He brings the football back across the 30, and with 4.08 to play in the football game, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, number one of the nation, seems secure, leading 34 to 13. Green, time you see there, 31-yard line, Nebraska's football. Nate Mason is now in at quarterback. A 205-pounder from Greenville, Texas, a senior. Check the backfield as they come out. Jeff Smith is in at tailback, or eyeback, 5'9", 190. Shaleen stays in at fullback. Or is it Rath Rathman is in there? Tom Rathman is in there. So fresh people in the ball game now. Penalty flag goes down, however. And you may have a little bit of movement along the front by Nebraska. The Cornhuskers will go home for homecoming next week up at Lincoln against Colorado, while the Missouri Tigers will have Kansas State here in Columbia. Illegal procedure. Nebraska did not have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Penalty decline. Down. Second down and 10. This is what the starting quarterbacks did in today's ball game. And it's more than just an adequate performance. While the yardage totals are not particularly awesome, what they did is what matters at the time they did it. Three minutes and 50 seconds to play in the football game. Nate Mason, he still got it. And he's going to be brought down around the 34. I don't know if somebody missed the handoff, uh, but by the time Nate was looking for somebody to give it to, there was nobody around, and he pulls it down, and Lachey, Steve Lachey, the nose guard, brought him down. So the strength of uh, Nebraska shows in the fourth quarter particularly as the moon now is out. And it's been a lovely day in Columbia, Missouri. We thank Dave Hart, the athletic director, and his fine staff for making our stay most comfortable and enjoyable. Always a nice place to come. Mason back to throw, getting some pressure. Looked like he wanted to set a screen. Now he throws the ball, and Tom Rathman drops it. Tom is a sophomore from Grand Island, Nebraska, and the heir apparent at fullback. Shaleen is a senior, and he'll be gone this year after this season.
Football is on the 34. And we're inside three minutes to play in the football game now as uh, Nebraska will punt. Kick is out of there, and the wind having quieted down, it's a beautiful punt. Short holes. Surrounded by white shirts and brought down on the five. Well, I guess that's the utter domination. A 53-yard kick, and Short Hose trying to find room, gave up distance, and was dropped on the five. Two minutes and 47 seconds to play in the football game. A 21-point lead for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and this this victory is secured. They'll go to 7-0 and on the season. Keith, they played a great second half. Both their offense and defense have made the big plays when they had to. Now Missouri with one more try at it as Adler rolls in his end zone, steps out of it and gets his pass off. The pass good to Andy Hill, and that's the first time Hill has seen the football all day. The gain is out to the 22, and it's good for a first down. Go back to the third quarter, though, as to where this football game turned around. When Missouri had the ball going into the win on the nine, couldn't score, and they had the ball first and goal on the one and fumbled it away to Nebraska on the three. And from that point on, it's just been downhill for the Missouri Tigers. The Nebraska offense took over and moved 97 yards for a touchdown. That's a great door slammer, isn't it? That pass is almost, and it is picked off. It is finally secured by Brett Clark for an interception. And once again, that's number 10, Brett Clark, six foot, two and a half, 200 pounds, All-American candidate. We previously said many times, when you throw in the middle, do not overthrow. You'll hit the safety man instead of your receiver. Watch the ball's high, elevated. Safety man comes in, Clark, number 10, makes a beautiful play as he intercepts the ball. He juggles it for a moment, falls down, but cradles it into his stomach for the interception. Crowd today, 72,348, the fifth largest ever here at Columbia. They've seen a good football game. It was a dandy for three quarters. Missouri had a chance to win, as Keith already said. If they had scored in the third quarter on those two opportunities, it would have been a different game today, right now. Now the clock will wind, and I don't know that Missouri is going to be spending any more timeouts trying to stop it. Bobby Bell, number 96, has had a good career at Missouri. Outstanding. He's a senior can run, likes to play football, chase from behind. He's a 4-7 sprinter. You can see that he catches Mason, makes a great leaping tackle to pull Mason down from a much longer run. Second down and three from the 36. Once again, Mason tries to uh, hold it in the middle, and then he sees a white shirt coming along. Jeff Smith tried to pitch it out to him, but Smith couldn't do much with it. And he's just short of the first down, it appears. Now let's look at what happened amongst the top tenors of the day. Number two, Texas, winning over Arkansas, 31 to three. Number three, North Carolina, rolling over North Carolina State, 32-14. Number four, West Virginia, shutting out Virginia Tech, 13 to nothing. Number five, Auburn, coming from behind, doing well in the second half to beat Georgia Tech, 31-13. Number six, Ohio State, defeated by Illinois, 17-13. Number 10, Miami, defeating Mississippi State, 31-7. Miami's looking down the road now at a matchup with West Virginia, which will have some import inside the top five. Notre Dame beating Army today, 42-0. It's third down and about seven as Nate Mason rolls it out, shows the ball, pulls it down, dives for the first down marker, and he's close to it. The most valuable players for the Chevrolet Award today are these. For Nebraska, Irving Fryer, who had seven pass receptions for 94 yards and two touchdowns. Marlon Adler for Missouri, 12 out of 17 passing, 175 yards, and scored a touchdown himself. So the respective universities will receive $1,000 each for their general academic scholarship fund from Chevrolet in the names of those players. Now a minute to go in the football game. Fourth down and one. And Smith has the first down. It appears for Nebraska. And that will do it in this ball game as for as Missouri's hopes are concerned. Keith, you, we want to praise Nebraska because they did show a lot of courage, a lot of determination, good morale, good leadership in the second half. And also, 
I, I would like to pay tribute to the Missouri team. They really made a battle out of it for Certainly three did. and a half quarters, and uh, the disappointment of the two touchdown, two threats being turned back when they could have taken old, uh, taken the lead. That does something to your team in the last few minutes of the ball game. He did not get his first down, and so the Missouri Tigers will get one more possession. Oklahoma came from behind today, late the ball game, to beat Oklahoma State 21 to 20. Kansas may yet be a factor. They may jump on somebody before the Big 8 conference race is done. They've become quite a pesky bunch over there at Lawrence. A big day today for Frank Sire. We've got a timeout on the field. The next time you make a long-distance business call, think about this. Warren Sykes is in to take the final snap of this ball game for Missouri. The football is near the 34. The Tigers with 56 seconds to play in the game. Sykes stands up, wings it out here to Short Hose, who falls down. Thirty-four, thirteen, Nebraska. They always know when they come into Columbia, they're going to have themselves a. There will be enough lumps on you to make you remember you've been here, and there will be again this year. But it's a rather decisive win for Nebraska. If you mentioned depth being a factor, and I think you're exactly right. It has showed up in the, in the fourth quarter. Pass complete to Craig White, who had a good day for Missouri. And it's close to a first down, and because of that, they stopped the clock with 14 seconds remaining to play in the ball game. If it is a first down, uh, then they will move the chains, and time is stopped in college football while the chains are moved. I'm not that sure that it is a first down. So you've got time taken here while they bring the chains on to check it. And we'll be right back. I'm out Missouri. Chevrolet taking charge. Make the final snap of the football game. Third down and inches to go for Missouri. Sides back. Throws it down the middle. Pass is good to Floyd. Floyd is pulled down at the Nebraska 36. And that's a first down, and it is not the final snap of the game as the clock stops on that reception. And the first down, the seven seconds to play. Sykes looked good on that play, Keith. He dropped back, he's tall, he could throw the ball downhill going uh, to a receiver in the middle, and that's important. Uh, and you've got another timeout call. The Tigers want to come out of here with a touchdown to make it closer. They have one timeout remaining, but only seven seconds to play. Seven seconds. Missouri trying to get something in those final seven seconds. Have it first down. At the 32, 37, excuse me, of Nebraska. Sykes will throw it one more time. Over the middle it goes, and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Chad Dafer, a dropping linebacker. And with the incompleted pass, once again the clock stops with two seconds to play. Well, I would look for Sykes to just throw it deep in the end zone hope that they, they could get uh, a jump and out uh, jump the Nebraska team. Coming up next Saturday here on ABC, Michigan, a 35-0 winner today against Iowa. Ball game in Ann Arbor. You know you're going to have around 105,000 people watching it. And it's a big ball game as far as the Big Ten is concerned. But right now, they've got to be thinking about who's going to handle Illinois. They're still in it. Mike White's done a great job. Sides pulls it down, going to run it out. Time has expired. He's still going. They finally pin him on the sidelines and knock him out. The ball game is over. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers have defeated the Missouri Tigers with a strong second-half performance by a score of 34 to 13, and almost unquestionably will remain the number one college football team in the nation. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arlins. Today's coverage of the Nebraska-Missouri game produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director, John Allen, associate director, Ned Simon, our statistician, Dave Bernson, spotter, Todd Barry. Now, this is Keith Jackson along with Frank Broyles and Bill Fleming. We hope you've enjoyed today's presentation of college football from Columbia, Missouri. NCAA college football. Brought to you by Mr. Goodrich and General Motors Parts. By IBM. By Canon.
proud to be the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography and the official 35 millimeter camera of the 1984 Olympics. And by Wendy's, where your hot and juicy hamburger is served with your choice of topping. You want something better? Your Wendy's kind of people. Once again, your final score. Nebraska, 34. Missouri, 13. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the official airlines of the 1984 LA Olympic Games, and proud sponsors of the United States Olympic team. This a presentation of ABC Sports. <laughs>